Hello, everybody. Peace, 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 peace. Welcome to the Saturday live stream. There you go. Main attraction. Uh, welcome, everybody. Hi, Corey. Hi, Jeanette and Freeland. Evian, Kerry Fernandez, Debbie, Pau SMR, T-Pal, Grant Ramirez, Nancy Carnas, Teresa McGuire, Vicente, Merch Helen, Kev is in the house, Karina. Oh, my gosh. Wait. Uh, Green Fash. Why is it for Liz M. How's it going, everybody? Pascual Munoz, uh, hi to Puerto Rico, sweetie. Hello, sweetie. And uh, also, Vicent's happy belated birthday. I know you, you were saying that you have birthday on the 18th, right? If I am not wrong, I think you said on the 18th. So happy belated birthday, sweetie. Uh, hey, Zide guys, love the peace, 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 peace at the beginning. Thank you. Linda Nolasco, Unique Collins, Crybaby Uzagi, Corey K, Safia Traore, Closet Hunter, my first live, and I'm on time. No more replay crew. Way to go, Closet Hunter. Eva Trist, uh, hello, sweetie. Debbie says happy birthday to Vicente. T Hunter, Zara Justina, happy Saturday, Fashion Bunker fam. Yes, and speaking of replay crew, of course, if you are watching this after the live stream is over, please help the Fashion Bunker out by posting in the comment section the timestamp when a new topic begins with the title of the topic that helps me later generate chapters. And also, Thumb up the live stream. Also, thumb up the video if you're watching it after the live stream is over. You know the drill. It means the world to uh, the Fashion Bunker um, YouTube-wise. Hello, everybody. How's it going? In my goth era. <laughs> Happy birthday, V Census Kev. My birthday's on Wednesday. Happy early birthday, Corey. Hi, honey, love. Hi, Grace Chen. Maldol, how's it going? Whoop, whoop. Happy Saturday, Jacob. Bad, beautiful bucket friends. Yas Quinn. Kev is eating cake. Monarch says hi, Grace. And Stephanie Jackson, how's it going, sweetie? Hello to you, too. Welcome, everybody. We're just coming out of a two and a half hour pre show, uh, which was exclusive to tier two members and tier two patrons. Every Saturday, there is a secret live stream that happens before the main live stream where we dish out and we go deep, down and dirty on a lot of things that go around in the blog vlogosphere, internet sphere. And yes, we went particularly dirty today. But as always, what happens in the pre-show stays in the pre-show. Yes. Unless some of you don't ditch or dish out what was said in the pre-show, in which case you? we'll go, we'll go. But other than that, uh, tier two members and tier two patrons get access to every Saturday's live stream pre-show. Tier one members and tier one patrons get access to said pre-show every first Saturday of the month. The first Saturday of the month is quickly approaching as relatively soon twill be the first uh, Saturday of the month of May. Can you believe that we're almost five months into the year? And boy, what a year it has been <laughs> between being sick several times, having an operation, <sighs> going through headaches. <laughs> it's like, and, and you know what? And it's like, oh, wait, it, the year just began. And now here we are uh, five months in or well, four months in. And I'm like, yeah, 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 that's the year. That's been 2024. Hi, Ryan. Super D, the hair today is giving. Thank you, darling. Goth era. Goth era, sweetie. Sweetie, sweetie, darling. Sweetie, darling. Literally. Uh, T-Pal is like, I know nothing, literally. Well, you were a little late to the show. <laughs> Crazy year, Debbie. Crazy year. I was told I looked like Dracula's Dada the other day. I was living. Oh, Jocelyn, that's a compliment. Hi, Ryan. Ryan says, Super D. Oh, sorry. I read, I read that one already. You see? Fruit fly brain today. Jeanette, I'm glad you are well. Thank you so much. Yes, I, thank, thank you so much. Yes, I am recovering. And um, it's, 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 it's going better, you know. So better days and worse days. Let's just put it that way. 2024 has been a journey already. I know, Zara. And none of us got a Birkin yet. <laughs> but it's been a journey. 58 likes and a million people watching. 
How is that possible? Come on, thumb up the live stream. It, it costs you nothing to thumb up. And you can tip your host here, if you wish. Bubbles, where's the link, Bubbles? Bubbles. Oh, she's slow today. Um, the question is, do you want a Birkin? You want a Birkin. You want a Birkin. <laughs> This is going to be a three-hour live stream of me just hypnotizing. <laughs> Debbie says, yes, I do want a Birkin. Grace Chen says, um, not really, but really want a Birkin. I like turtle. <laughs> the turtle wants a Birkin, too. Debbie lies. She does want a Birkin after all. T. Hunter, nah, I want two Birkins. <laughs> Hi, MJMJ. Grace Jen says, I managed to try on a black box calf Kelly with gold hardware. Well, we'll go, we'll go. That's a beaut. That's a beaut. That's a beaut. Debbie's like, oh, I'm going to get you a Birkin. <laughs> Monarch says, yes, I want a Birkin. I want a Birkin. Hi, love. I want them all, right? Kurna says, what size, Grace? 28. I want to say it was a 28. Was it a 28? Was it a 32? Teresa says, I take one if I was super rich, but would never spend that kind of money otherwise on one bag. Vicent says, I'd pick a Kelly over a Birkin. Corey says, no, not really. That's a very good trip to Norway like first class both ways and spending money. MJMJ MJ says, you get a Birkin, you get a Birkin. Everyone gets a Birkin. That's right, Oprah. Grace Chen is like, yeah, 28 centimeter. You see, I had a hunch. I had a hunch. Money love, a uh, honey love. I would love for you to get a Birkin. I think you would wear it well. Thank you, honey. Ollie says, hi, hi, Ollie. Let's rock. Jeanette, I really want a pochette Matisse. Debbie's like, I'm a zip it for a Birkin. <laughs> Hi, Natalie Dietz. Corina says, I'm liking the Kelly, but just not sure that a leather good is worth it, you given wear and tear. And she says, Birkin, Bitcoin, Hermes. Exactly. Evatrice, Birkin, Bitcoin, Hermes, Butter. Mr. Beast, Mr. Beast. Grace Chen, LOL, I'm glad I tried. Now, I know the size that suits me. Right. Kev, I want Bruno with no prenup. Kev, you're thinking, this is, this is, this is chess game, advanced level premeditation, honey. Oh, Kev is pl not playing. He is in it to win it. He wants Bruno with no prenup. Yeah. Teresa says, 30 centimeter for me. I like them big. <laughs> I want a 35. Uh, I'm going to sell my crypto and get me a Birkin. Right, Tanya? Cryptocurrency. Bitcoin. Mr. Beast. Birkin. Hermes. Grace also tried a Birkin and didn't like it. I think that size was too big. Well, get a small Birkin. Crybaby Zagi says, LOL, yas, Kev, no prenup. My rule is not to have something too big, not over 30 centimeter for my weight, which is very small. Well, that makes sense. Everything, gotta get, you got to get the bag that, you know, you got to get the size that matches you. Proportions are everything. Hey, Katana. Deborah, see how's it going? I'm liking palladium hardware. Why do we settle for hardware in gold tone? Why do we settle? No, we don't settle. We prefer gold tone. I prefer, I don't settle. I demand gold tone. Hi, everyone. Hi, Joyful Remorse. Vicent says, I take a little Mr. Arnaud. I can stuff him in a Louis Vuitton duffel. He does look tiny. While uh, Bruno, you know, he's cheruby. He is cheruby. I think Bruno... You know, Bruno is, uh, he, he's, he's plump, ripe, 
ready for the plucking. I-Y-K-Y-K. Get your minds out of the gutter. Get your minds out of the gutter. We are, we are elegant people here. <laughs> we are polite. We are elegant. We, we curtsy. We curtsy. We, we, do, we, we, we treasure the finer things in life. Like tea on a Saturday, darling. Elegant, gentle conversations. Gentle, elegant conversations. <laughs> and Patrice is like, oh my God. Oh my God, are we there already? Is the cringe already happening in minute one? Yes. The cringe is happening in minute one. You best believe. Because, I mean, you know, we ain't got the tan. We got to move on. You know what I mean? Life is short, baby. We got to keep it on track. Corina says the consensus seems to be that a Birkin is heavy. What about the Kelly? The Kelly is pregnant. I-Y-K-Y-K. -Y -K. The Birkin is cheruby. The Kelly is pregnant. Pam McNeil. Hey, Jacob. I know you. I know you, you, oh, I know you love your MS bracelet. What do you think of the Tiffany bone cuff? Um, okay. 20 years ago? Yes. You're talking about the Elsa Peretti cuff. Elsa Peretti, right? I love Elsa Peretti. She designed for Halston. She designed for Tiffany. She got the job, right, according to stories through Halston. Um, I love that Liza Minnelli always wears all the sizes in silver. Great. Love the design. Hate the silver. Uh, because uh, Tiffany silver, I have had bad experiences with their silver. It tarnishes really badly, in my opinion. Everything I say in this live stream is for entertainment purposes only, not rooted in truths or facts. Everything's a legend, just my opinion. If Elsa Peretti, who unfortunately passed away, but if her designs were to pass from Tiffany to Hermès, and if Hermès were to start making the bone cuff, I would buy it, because then I would know that the silver would be good quality. Zaitka says, Dear Jacob, do you know if Chanel still produces the classic flap bag and maxi size? Just wondering. The timeless classic double flap and maxi. Yes, they do. They still produce it. Corey, you see what I did there with the Kelly? Well, thank God someone did. Because I had a feeling I was losing my people here. Nobody got the joke. Heavy bag can be a weapon. Hit them with the handbag, says Deborah, Or hit them with the words. Psychology. Hi, FN. Hi, Jacob. Oh, you got insomnia? Well, you're in the right place. Insomniacs are welcome. I, too, suffer from insomnia, so there you go. Spend my day slipping, spend my nights tripping. <laughs> Grace says, see, I have to put a limit on a bag size for me. I used to carry huge bags, and then I would put too much in it, and then the bag becomes heavy. Thumb up the live stream. Thank you, MJ. MJ. Hi, Shikma. Karina says, is there any acronym for I don't know? I don't know. <laughs> ah, there you go, Debbie. IDK. Pat McNeil says, oh, wow, thanks. Didn't know that. Uh, wait, now I already forgot what, what we didn't know. Did I say something that we didn't know? Cha, uh, the brain. Mm, brain, wondrous creature. Does whatever it wants to do. Kev is polishing the silver. Oh, Pam, you were talking about the... What I was talking when you said you didn't know about the um, uh, what's it called the silver tarnishing from Tiffany or about the Kelly? Oh, we'll go, we'll go. Hmm. Kev, oh yes, honey, you polish, you're you're polishing the um, uh, the family goods, the family heritage, right? The the family treasures. Mm -hmm. Hi, Leah, how's it going? Corey's like, come on, sweetie, it's me. <laughs> we groaned in silence at your papa joke. What papa joke? The Kelly? T pal. No, you, no, Kelly, the Kelly bag is for, yo, oh, Debbie. Uh, Karina, about to, Kel hi, yes, I have, Rosanna Navarro, thank you so much.
Rosanna later. Navarro donated $20. Doing this now as I might forget later. Always love watching you, Jacob, in the fashion bunker. Thank you, sweetie. Yes, I, I have a tendency of forgetting stuff as well. We'll go, we'll go. That's why I write everything down, you guys. But uh, tip of shade. Shame. 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 Hit it, Bubbles. There you go. The blowing has to be better coordinated. Kisses! I never know. Bubbles does every time a different sound, and I don't know how... I can't time this guy. I have to exercise it. Not the best. But anyway, I blew the confetti. We'll go, we'll go. Thank you, Rosanna Navarro. How's it going, sweetie? Thank you so much for the generosity and the tipation. Thank you, thank you. Kev's, oh, Honey Love says, yes, I have the set from 2005-ish and the boxes, etc. and the silver is terrible. Told ya. I had it cleaned. I told ya. I had it cleaned several times. Hermes silver is better. It doesn't tarnish the way Tiffany's does. Thank you. I don't want to be the only one saying it, so you guys say I'm biased, this and that. There you go. We got receipts. Other people are sharing the same experiences. Uh... The tips, by the way, thank you so much, Rosanna Navarro. Uh, the tips help keep the sponsors away. And there are many ratchet sponsorship requests in my inbox. Many. Ratchet. So thank you so much, guys, for your generosity. Um, no, Debbie, it's not the dad papa jokes. Debbie, Kelly, Grace Kelly, oh, God. Closet Hunter, is the East West Chanel flap still in production? No, it's not. I bought a purple one years ago for $1,200 and it is by far my favorite Chanel baglet. I looked online and they're like three, five, four, five dollars now. Wow. Yeah, no, they don't make them no more. But they might again in the future. You never know. You know Chanel is very much like following the money. Letty, how's it going, sweetie? Hello, sweetie. Darling, I'm so happy to catch this live. Just getting home from a work dinner. What a wonderful way to end my day with you guys. We'll go, we'll go. Thanks. Thanks, Letty. And uh, yeah, T Pal is like, hi, Nancy. Hi, Nancy. Joy, joy, love, see. Hi, joy, love, see. Oh, Terry, my love. Teresa Maguire donated $75. Me and Hubby enjoying show as always. Thank you so much, Terry and Hubby. Hubby's gonna fall asleep, right? Because I'm gonna be like talking. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be talking you to sleep, hubby darling, when we talk about fashion and stuff that you know. You watch for the love of Terry, which is gorgeous. So thank you so much for being so supportive of Terry and of the fashion bunker indirectly by supporting Terry. So tip of shade. A shame. Tip of shame. Hit it, bubbles. <laughs> See the timing. Try to get the timing right. Try to get the timing right. Kisses, kisses for my Terry and Missies. <laughs> Thank you, Terry, so much. But yeah, like I said, uh, the tips do help keep the sponsors at bay. Otherwise, could you imagine the beginning of every live stream? This live stream is sponsored by and then 10 minutes of some ratchet something nobody cares for. <laughs> I finally bought my Rukambon Tufafa Lippy and made an account in Chanel shop. Wow, the freebies, man. Oh, Grace Chen. Glad you got the freebies. Glad you got the freebies. Corey says, Jacob, darling, not everyone has a brain full of useless knowledge like we do. It's so useless, you guys. <laughs> so useless. Sometimes I think to myself, why do I, why do I know this? Nobody cares. And then, like, you know, when it comes to, like, stuff that you would need to know for survival, like, you know, math, zilch. Nancy. $10. The tip of shame. 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 And hit it, Bublé. Mm -hmm. This one was timed just right. We did it, Nancy. Thank you so much, sweetie. Thumb up the live stream. Thank you. Uh, Corinna says, does anyone understand why there is a huge price jump from the Chanel Mini to a small? Almost double. Oh, Corinna. Yeah, why don't you write a letter to uh, Bruno Pavlovsky? He'll fix that. Oh, he'll fix that in a jiffy. He'll just make the Mini cost $9,000. <laughs> Leah, thank you so much, Leah my love. Leah <laughs> donated $20. Sponsors, 
leave our dacre alone. Love, heart. Tip of shame, tip of shame, you know the name of the game. It's the tip of shame. Hit it, Bubbles. Okay, good. Yes, I want that confetti to blow when I blow, honey. And then the kiss can end whenever it ends. Better. Zoo better, Bubbles. Zoo better. Thank you so much, sweetie. Thank you for the generosity. Claudia from B says, Jacob, I saw a picture on Insta of a bow with the Byzantine in the middle, with the Byz Byzantine in the middle from the Chanel Matia da 24 and thought of you immediately. Chanel! What's a Byzantine in the middle? That makes no sense. Uh, I, uh, the, the cross? Uh, okay, Karina says, actually, it might be just over double the price. Yes, Karina, because the single flap mini is a single flap. It's a simple, it's, it's a very simple structured bag. And the double flap, <laughs> they like to tell you it's a double, but it's a bag in a bag. So you get two bags for the price of one, see? But the mini... Even though it has only one flap. Oh, Renegade Realta! T Renegade donated $10 for that spritz of puff thumb. Oh, thank you. No, that's way too much. That's way... <laughs> Renegade gave me five bucks for the spritz of parfum and then another five as a tip on top. Thank you so much, sweetie. Shame. 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 <laughs> Hit it, Bubbles. Mm -hmm. <coughs> it's the parfum. It was intense. Thank you so much, sweetie. So, uh, technically, the mini also has the leather mini is lined in leather. So even the mini has leather a leather lining, like a bag inside the bag. Technically, <coughs> Grant Ramirez. Thank Grant you so much, Ramirez sweetie. Donated ten dollars. Let me take a sip. Shame, shame, shame. Hit it, Bubbles. Mm. Oh, that was a good timing. I feel like the kiss, the confetti, the blow, everything, this was a good one. That was the best timing. So I, I feel like this was the best timing so far. Terry says, <clears throat> Hubby ordered one of your Super Deco uh, tank tops. He enjoys your show as much as I do. He also loves fashion, especially Louis Vuitton. Oh, thank you so much, Terry. And Javi, I, I hope he enjoys the tank. Corey says, but we kick ass as Trivial Pursuit, except for the sports part, not so much. Yeah, no, I'm not so good at Trivial Pursuit. I mean, Renegade, thank you for the initiation. Thank you. Yeah, it was a fun, a fun initiation. <laughs> the only hazing that happens in the fashion bunker is everybody gets sprayed with perfume. Good perfume. Everybody who came to the show to see Teruko Nakajima's Made in America show uh, last Saturday got sprayed with Chanel Number no. Five Extra. Inevitable. Who, came, who had the guts to come up to me and say hi? Got sprayed with Chanel Number. No. That you like talk about that's now that's hazing that I'm that I'm I'm here for. Hey artsy hipster. Hey artsy hipster. Oh my God, where have I been? Where have you been? Where have you been? I don't know. Where have you been? <laughs> Claudia von B, how's it going? The jewels. Sorry if I'm referring to them wrong. The jewels? Hmm? Who? Hey, Danny. Love DIY. Yeah, well, how's it going, my love? Danny just gifted five Super Deco memberships. Crybaby Uzagi was gifted a membership by Love DIY. The Renegade Realtor was gifted a membership by Love DIY. Corina was gifted a membership by Love DIY. <laughs> Corina was gifted a membership by Love DIY. Honey Love was gifted a membership by Love DIY. Pat McNeil was gifted a membership by Love DIY. There you go.
There you go. We'll go, we'll go, we'll go, we'll go. Real silver tarnishes. It can be rhodium plated to slow the oxidation. Nan Z, get, well, that depends. Well, we'll go, we'll go. Nan Z gifted five Super Nickel memberships. Shikma Bonfield was gifted a membership by Nan Z. Letty Baudreau was gifted a membership by Nan Z. Debianca was gifted a membership by Nan Z, the banana girl from Nevada. Evelyn Rodriguez was gifted a membership by Nan Z. Patty J was gifted a membership by Nan Z. And Teresa McGuire just gifted five Super Deco memberships. Liz M was gifted a membership by Teresa McGuire. David Marr was gifted a membership by Teresa McGuire. Anastasia Jacob Scott was gifted a membership by Teresa McGuire. Angela Y was gifted a membership by Teresa McGuire. JJW was gifted a membership by Teresa McGuire. Thank you so much to Love DIY, aka Danny, Nancy, and Teresa McGuire for being so generous and gifting five tier one memberships each to uh, 15 lucky new recipients of the tier one membership, a one month free tier one membership to the Fashion Bunker. Don't forget you guys, tier one members, you can start using your special emojis right now and you get a little bo a badge bottle, perfume bottle of honor next to your name, but also every first Saturday of the month, tier one members uh, get access together with tier one patrons to the pre-show on the first Saturday of the month. That's a live stream before the main live stream. Today we also had a live stream before the main live stream, but today was exclusive to tier two members because it was not the first Saturday of the month, you see. Tier two members get access every Saturday to the pre-show. <clears throat> tier one members, first Saturday of the month. Um, welcome everybody. And I'm thinking to myself, you know, since we have 15 new members, let, I, I like round numbers. Let's do 20. What say you, Super D tops those off with another five. Let me gift you five memberships. But first, Pam McNeil. <laughs> Pam McNeil donated $25. Thanks for all of your knowledge on all your channels. It really is priceless. My Chanel Beauty essay always wonders how I know so much. I'll never tell. And here's another tip for you. In the pre-show today, we shared all the upcoming leaks from Chanel. Ah! Frozen Luxury. Hey, Sai, how's it going, my love? Oh, my God! We got... Wait, wait, wait. Hold on, hold on. Joyful Remorse just gifted five Super Deco memberships. Wait, hold on. Let me pop a cherry. Oh, my God. How do we, what are we going to do first? Pam McNeil, let me pop a cherry. We got to pop a cherry for Pam. Okay, no. We're gonna pop the cherry, sorry, because Bubbles does everything in a weird order. So first we do Joyful Remorse, then we're gonna pop a cherry. Hold your horses! Joyful Remorse gifted five Super Deco memberships. Frozen Luxury was gifted a membership by Joyful Remorse. Nancy Carnas was gifted a membership by Joyful Remorse. Sylvan Bird was gifted a membership by Joyful Remorse. Sue, who does not sue, it's just called Sue, was gifted a membership by Joyful Remorse. Mo S was gifted a membership by Joyful Remorse. Everything I say in this live stream is for ratchet entertainment purposes only, not rooted in truth. So facts, everything's alleged, just my opinion. I just wonder how many people are gonna say, oh my God, he did the Illuminati sign. He did the Illuminati sign, oh my god! He's a devil! He's a devil! He comes from the underground! Cha! If you only knew the amount of time Gargos, that was in the underground. Psychics! Everything's ungodly! We are dar dork sodded sawkicks! Everything's ungodly! Dork sodded! Totally dork sodded! Now, let me pop a cherry. Let me pop a cherry for Pat McNeil's wonderful, uh, wonderful, generous tip. 
Shame, the tip of shame from Pam. The tip of shame from Pam. The tip of shame from Pam. Hyman Wade, Papa Cherry Buble. Oh, we live in Ferret. Frozen Luxury, the ever fabulous Jacob. Thank you so much, my love. I watched your live stream uh, with, uh, after it happened. You were already finished with the, otherwise I would have, of course, uh, chatted with you guys, uh, but uh, with uh, Winnie. Oh my God, Ray, my love. Oh, Pink, Pink Ray, thank you so much. Dollars. Allegedly. Allegedly. I told you last live stream uh, that I have your card next to my bed. It's always there together with my uh, Chanel perfumes. Yeah, Odd Pink Ray met up with me at uh, Teruko Nakajima's uh, uh, Made in America show last uh, Saturday. And uh, she gave me a wonderful, wonderful little card uh, that I have with me. And uh, also, Ray was initiated into the Fashion Bunker cult and was sprayed with Chanel Number no. 5 Parfum. Her daughter said, oh, hell no. <laughs> the daughter was like, yeah, no, I don't think so. I'm like, okay, suit yourself, girl. <laughs> but mama mama ray mama ray was like yeah no yeah give it to me baby spray it on baby <laughs> lay it on and lay it flat and low baby and um where's my other hold on i, I lost the slipper just like yeah i saw pink ray you was I, i'm just like cinder fella i lost the slipper so anyway let me top it off now we got 20 okay fine let's do 25 I am going to gift you another five memberships. Odd Pink Ray says, I was. Yeah, I read that. What? what? I don't understand. Bubbles is like going ballistic now. I need an explanation, not just. Odd Pink Ray? Oh, Odd Pink Ray. Wait a minute. Wait, uh, did I miss a tip? I, d I did not blow the tip for Odd Pink Ray. I didn't. Okay, let me do it now. Ray, sorry. You see, brain, brain fart. The tip of shame. The tip of shame. The tip of shame. The brain of a fruit fly. I wasn't a fruit fly for Halloween for no reason, you know. There was a reason. Are you ready, Ray? Let's blow this bitch. <gasps> Oh, we love the confetti. It's the tip of shame confetti, y'all. Thank you so much, Ray. So, yeah, because I blabber on and then I forget what I was going to say. Uh, oh, so, yeah, Frozen Luxury. So um, I was watching the, the, um, the show with you and Winnie. And uh, I was like, I had no clue. Sai at one point is like, I'm no, I'm no longer friends with Rich Lux. And I was like, um, really? You sent him the Birkin and now no longer friends. Made me kind of sad though. But I was shook. I had no clue. I know, Saya, but I mean, you are drama. <laughs> Saya, you know, Saya sits there with his Versace pillow hugging himself. And you know, when he squishes that pillow, it's it's over. It's over. <laughs> I know the body language. I'm like, oh boy. Oh boy, she's squishing the pillow. Something's coming. Oh, she gonna say something now. Oh, she gonna do something now. And then she does it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's the pillow, baby. It's the pillow. <laughs> Jacob, you got the blowing down. All right, Nancy. Thank you, sweetie. <laughs> I mean, Jacob, Corey's having Discord issues. Uh, what are the Discord issues? The pillow don't lie. Uh, what's the Discord issue? You can't join Discord because you have to log in to your account on Patreon or if you're a member. Uh, no, Corey's a member. So you have to log in to YouTube, Google. You have to log into Google. And you have to connect Discord to YouTube. 
you have to connect Discord to YouTube first. Instructions are in the member area on my channel. You know, like you go to my YouTube channel, you can click on community tab, videos, lives, and then there's also a member area. You click on the member area and you scroll through and there's a whole instruction for all the members, everything, to, how to do, what to do. Uh, and in that section, in the member area, is step-by-step -step described what you got to do, including you have to connect Discord to YouTube in order to be able to access it properly. I know, sweetheart, I did all of that. If you did all of that and it still don't work and you did something wrong because it's kind of very mechanical, it's like math, <laughs> you know, uh, unless once I remember Audrey, Audrey once said, that maybe depending on which tablet you're connecting with. So anyway, let me read it to you. How to connect your YouTube channel to Discord. Step number one, open up the Discord app and next to your username. Okay, who wrote this? This, this? There's no grammar here. Open up the Discord app and next to your name to access the cog. And next to your name, what to access the cog wheel? Open up the Discord app and next to, no, okay, bubbles. Like, open up the Discord app and next to your username to access the cogwheel. This sentence makes no logical sense. So whoever wrote this, oh, this is Discord support. Discord wrote this. <laughs> Discord, please, can you fire whoever wrote this? Uh, so I guess click. Open up, I, I guess they just did not spell out the word click. Open up the Discord app and next to your username, click the cog wheel, the cog wheel. Number two, under your user settings, head to the connections tab. I repeat, number two, under your user settings, head to the connections tab. Number three. Connect your YouTube account to your Discord account by pressing on the YouTube tile. Connect your YouTube account to your Discord account by pressing on the YouTube tile. This will open a new browser window where you can log into your YouTube account. This will open a new browser window where you can log into your YouTube account. Point four, after logging into your YouTube account, you should get a message stating you've successfully connected your accounts. I repeat, after logging into your YouTube account, you should get a message stating you've successfully connected your accounts. This is how to connect your YouTube channel to Discord. Let me post a link in the chats. I'm, I just posted the link in the chats. Okay, there you go. All right, um, there you go. That's the link. That... <laughs> but, you know, um, so let's get back to business. Now, um, where were we? Oh, yes. So, Saya was like no longer friends with Rich Lux. Shook. 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 Because shortly after that, I check my comments. I, I regularly check comments under my videos. Rich Lux commented under one of my videos and said, love you. Now, I know he does that a ton to a lot of channels, whatever. He just writes that to keep himself in the algorithm, I believe, <laughs> allegedly. So he would just comment something to stay relevant and to keep active on as many channels as possible, but whatever. I was like, oh, what a coincidence. Everything happens at the same time. Like Saya was just talking about him and now he comments and I'm like, mm, okay. So anyway, uh, you know, I mean, IYKYK, IYKYK, but it is what it is. What can I tell you? 
But I know when Saya, when Saya clasps the pillow, shit going down. <laughs> that claspation that Versace pillow has seen in its days. <laughs> the amount of claspation. <clears throat> now, I have a couple of things to say. Uh, well, of course, we have wonderful topics to talk about. Thumb up the live stream while you're at it. Um, so, now. <sighs> yes. Uh, so, uh, Avke Art says, love the outfit, Jacob. Thank you so much, sweetie. Thank you. So Kev sent me uh, a link shortly before the pre-show uh, to Christie's auctions. Well, actually, it wasn't like Christie's auction. It was a link to an Instagram post. Maybe it was Christie's Instagram post. I don't know. Well, anyway, it has to do with Vivian Westwood. You guys. Hmm. Vivian Westwood uh, passed away um, wait on wait a minute wait she when did she pass away December of 2022 I was I was I was trying to think like wait did she pass away 2021 no 2022 2022 December of 2022 she passed away right? So now it's March of 2024, April, April 2024. You see, I have no clue what month it is anymore. It's almost May. And they have announced on Instagram, yeah, Kev sent me the link. They have announced on Instagram that Christie's auctions are going to auction off a huge chunk of Vivian's own private wardrobe. And apparently, apparently, uh, Andreas Krontaler, who's her husband and who was also, since the 90s, has been the designer of Gold Label, <clears throat> which now, since 2016, became Andreas Krontaler for Vivian Westwood, still Gold Label. He has released a statement as well, because at first I thought, who is selling this stuff? Very bizarre. Is it Carlo? No. Andreas is behind this as well. So it's like, he wants this to happen, and I, I wondered why. Like, why would they do that? Why wouldn't they keep these pieces and open up their own Vivian Westwood Museum? I find it very sad. What do you guys think? I find it very sad. But at the same time, very interesting. At the same time, like, I want, I want that Christie's auction catalog. I want that catalog. And I don't know, Kev, if we can already see the pictures online or if it's too early, because the auction is in June. And I don't know if they've already photographed everything and if the catalog is out. Because you know how the, these auctions, when they auction off an estate or more pieces, they usually create a book for them, a catalog. And I don't know how early on they issue the catalog before the auction. And it, it, it's just, I think it's, it's sad. I, I don't know. Would she have wanted this? You know, Vivian left a very, very precise and clear... Um, will. She was very organized, outlined plan, who she wants to give her portion of the business to, who she wants to design when she's gone. Like, she allocated clear instructions for everything, allegedly. So I don't know. Maybe she also, in her will, wanted all of these pieces to be auctioned off. But the weird thing is, if it were Vivian, she would either be super punk and just burn everything, you know, or she would do it for charity. Now, the link that Kev sent me to this Instagram post doesn't state anything about the proceeds because I was thinking maybe it was in her will, like auction off couple hundred of my pieces from 
my past and I want that money donated to some charity. But none of that is mentioned in the post. So it feels like the money's gonna go either to Andreas or directly to the company. I have no clue what's going on. Hey, happy life. How's it going, sweetie? Katanas is kind of morbid, right? Affect Art says it's kind of sad. Oh, Danny says, I'm so sad. Hopefully proceeds go to charity. They mention nothing about charity. And, and then also uh, one of the oldest pieces, if not the oldest piece, at least according to this Instagram post, is from 1983 from the Witches collection, one of her earliest collections. Uh, Rosanna Navarro, I, I completely agree with you. She was surrounded by people that don't share her vision. Some did, some did, but not all. So the oldest piece is from 1983 from the Witches Collection. That one is probably going to be really expensive. And what I found also very interesting, why do I mention that Vivian Westwood's association should have made a museum in her honor? But then again, you know, Vivian was not a museum type. Like... She loved to go to museums, but she wouldn't really care to be celebrated like that, to have people worship her in a museum looking at her clothes that she wore when she was alive. I don't think she's the type of person who would want that. So maybe it's not something she would have liked. Oh, 500 items, Kev? They're selling 500 items from her private estate. So... Uh, BF says, Christie's lists where the proceeds are going, several charities, including Amnesty and her own foundation. Oh, okay, good. Thank you, BF, for that, because the Instagram post lists no charities. But that's good to know. If this is true, then that's okay. Christie's, if Christie's is listing where the proceeds are going, and if several of the proceeds are going to charities, including Amnesty and her own foundation, then we'll go, we'll go. That's great. Then, hey, more power to her foundation, the, the Vivian Foundation. Now, having said that, she's not the type who would want a museum in her honor. But, but hear me out, people. Hear me out, Westwood team. Instead of selling these pieces and calling it a one-and-done deal and you get the money you get for your foundation and that's it, wouldn't it have been better had you opened up a tiny little space, you know, like a museum dedicated to Vivian, to her clothes, to her vision, to her activism, and have people visit it whenever they want. And the proceeds of all the ticket sales to go to see the museum go to charity. Of course, you pay sustaining the museum and keeping it alive and maintaining the museum and paying the staff, and then whatever is left, you pay, you pay to charity. That way, I feel, you would have a constant flux of money to fuel into the charity. But the way they're doing it, like, well, let's sell these 500 pieces. Whatever money we get, we get. Christie's doesn't do shit for free. Christie's is going to take their good portion as well. And then that's it. Kev says, Krontaler uh, broached the subject of selling Westwood's clothes with her in the final weeks of her life. Oh, Kev, you're reading what... Okay, good. So Kev is now typing. Uh, he's copying and pasting uh, from Christie's, I guess. Uh, so Kev says, Andreas Krontaler, who was her husband, still is, widower, broached the subject of selling Westwood's clothes with her in the final weeks of her life. Quote, I said to her, right there at the end, or towards the end, I had this idea when she wouldn't be anymore. I love how they don't say the word. Instead, they just say, you're no longer. Should I sell the clothes and give the money to a good cause? He's understandably and visibly emotional. She said, yes, of course. It's a good idea. All the money you can raise for something is helpful. That's heartbreaking, but also heartwarming. But like I said, if they sell the clothes, it's a one and done deal. You get the money you get, and then you don't get money again. But if you 
show the clothes to her fans and to people who really respect her and love her, and you make a space for people to come and see the clothes, you will have a constant flux of money that you could channel into your charity. I think that would have been way better long term. than just calling it a one and done deal. Nat, yeah, exactly. Buy merch in a gift shop there, even more proceeds for charity. Exactly. So there's ways and ways of doing these things, but I, like I said, to each their own. I mean, exactly, Debbie. <laughs> it is history. Now the Kardashians are gonna have those pieces and they're gonna ruin them with their BBLs and whatever other crap they got going on uh, with their bodies. So, and morals or lack thereof, shall I say. Now, allegedly. Um, so, having said all that, having said all, well, Corey, I mean, you know, Corey says, I get it though. It gets painful to have to see stuff that reminds you of a lost spouse. Okay, so let me just clarify something here. Uh, Vivian's archives are huge. Uh, Vivian did not keep her archives at home where Andreas is confronted with them on a daily basis. You have to imagine Vivian worked and literally lived in, in the ateliers of the Vivian Westwood uh, main headquarters uh, at uh, uh, the, what are they called? The studios. Oh God, I've been there. Uh, uh, something, something studios really close to world's end. All of her clothes, well, not all of them, I mean, the stuff she wore towards the end of her life was at home. But we're talking all of these historical pieces that she wore throughout the decades, they, they're all in the Westwood archives. So it's not like Andreas is confronted with them all the time, you know. Uh, Corey, it is, it, it, um, okay. <laughs> We really, today, misinformation. It is her personal collection, the clothes she wore. But the clothes she wore are also in the Westwood archives. Because the Westwood archives are Vivian Westwood. So there's no difference, really. Uh, there are some pieces that were runway pieces that she did not wear. And then there are pieces that she did wear. The pieces that she did wear are archive, but also her personal clothes that she wore. They're all together. Now they're compartmentalized separately. Probably you're going to have the portion, okay, these are the ones that Vivian actually wore. These are the ones that she didn't wear, but they're all still archived. Um, okay, <laughs> good, we got it. So, um, so there's that. Now, Having said all that, just like with the Pete Burns Vivian Westwood collection that his husband sold after Pete Burns was no more, uh, I wouldn't mind getting a piece or two for my uh, archive, for my collection, you know, uh, to preserve them, to be able to show, to give them a new life to showcase them on my channel, to review them, to, to, you know. But at the same, and also, you know, but at the same time, I need to see the catalog. I need to see what pieces are there. You know, I, if you ask me what piece, I don't know what piece. I, I don't know which piece I would like, you know, something that would emotionally touch me. You know, if I if I see if I see it in the catalog and I say, oh, well, this looks really really beautiful, or this looks symbolic, or oh, she made a particular political statement with this piece, or whatever. You know what I mean? But uh, of course, being Vivian Westwood, they're probably going to like sell for a ton of money, budget permitting. You know, let's see, because June is around the corner, you guys. You know, it's like not a lot of time to put away money. Like, oh, good. We have a year time to save up money to buy one piece from the Westwood archives. 
It's it's June. It's in like what? It's in one and a half months. I don't know. Is it the beginning of June? End of June? It's like really soon. So it's not like, yeah, let's put aside, you know, $20,000 to, uh, you know, buy some archival pieces. The budget is, it just isn't there. I don't have that budget at the moment, unfortunately. So it's kind of sad also to see those pieces go then because who knows who's going to get them. But yeah, that's just life. It kind of saddened me when I read the news that Kev sent me. The bunker to fundraise to bid something for the sisterhood of traveling pirates shirt. Oh, Kev would be amazing. FN says, yes, your idea is better. And Nats, I bought Coco Chanel's souvenirs in South France and went to see her original tweed jackets. And I'm not even interested in Coco. Paid about 100 bucks. I don't understand. N Nats or Nays? Nat. And buy merch in a gift shop there. Even more proceeds to charity. Uh -huh. And then and then FN says, yes, your idea is better. And, and Nats' idea, like... Uh, gift shop, I bought Coco Chanel's souvenirs in South of France. What souvenirs did you buy in South of France? Are there souvenirs? Are there Coco Chanel souvenirs that I know nothing about? Hold on a minute. Hold it, hold it, hold it. What Coco Chanel souvenirs in the South of France in a gift shop? Say what now? We got, we have to talk here. What souvenir? <laughs> the real Shaquille, how's it going, Jocelyn? I agree with you, Jacob. Um, a museum would have been the gift that keeps on giving, but someone has to be willing to take on the responsibility of organizing it. Yeah, but Jocelyn, you hire people. You hire people to do it. You know what I mean? It doesn't It doesn't take a village, really. And there's a lot of people who love Vivian, students, young people who are studying fashion design, activism. They would love to work there, you know, to, to pitch in and to be a part of this movement. I think it would be amazing, really. Odd Pink Ray says, so Christie's is in the Financial Times, says that they have been talking to the family for a year and the items will not be museum pieces, but mainly personal items that she used every day. Right, which to me are museum pieces. <laughs> this is, again, this is how these people think. They think money. I don't even know where to start how stupid this was, what they said. Because, think about it. You go to the Cairo Egyptian Museum in Cairo, and the best pieces you get to see are the artifacts that, that they uncovered of everyday life of the people of Egypt living their everyday lives, how they baked and cooked bread, how they made beer, how they grind everything, you know, ground everything. There's like a whole um, display of utensils, tools that they use on a daily basis to live. Little makeup containers, perfume bottles. This is not, thank you for becoming a patron, Marlene. Thank you, sweetie. This is not the Pharaoh, you know, this is not Tutankhamun's burial chamber with the gold. We're talking the simplest things. They're in a museum. So when Christie says these are not museum pieces, it's her life. She's a historical figure. She's an important historical figure. So it is extremely relevant from a museum perspective to have a room set up with her personal day-to-day -day items. Like, it's, it's a no-brainer to me for them to say, no, no, this is no museum pieces. This is just her private items, you guys. I'm like, well, that's... What the hell, people? That's literally the stuff that museums are made of. I don't get it. I don't get it. I know, Gloria, we got to travel to the south of France. We got to travel to the south of, to south of France. Sign up to bid. I'm going to bid, says Old Pink Ray. We hired Jacob to manage Vivian's estate. Cha, I don't have the time for that. Could you imagine? I would love to, though, but that would be, like, more than a full-time job. Then no more live streaming. <laughs> I was in Provence a couple of years ago and didn't see any souvenirs, says Deb. Hmm. Grace says, so it sounds like there will be a museum in the future. No, I don't think so, Grace. I don't think so. Alpin Grace says, yes, money, but us Vivian lovers may find something under the radar. Let's talk. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. She sure is, says Debbie, a historical figure. Yeah. 
yeah. Uh, uh, Grace Chen says, you can have the live stream in the Vivian Weston Museum. <laughs> yeah, that, things become more difficult when you're working for someone. You can't just like turn on a camera and film. Othpin Grace says, I bet there will be designers and collectors buying. Oh, for sure. For sure. Love DIY says, even Frida Kahlo has a museum. How grotesque that these people aren't thinking ahead. I agree. Robbie says, people bought Marilyn Monroe's makeup and kitchen stuff, etc. at auction. People buy regular things. Exactly. We just, we've seen how obsessed Erin Parsons is, uh, the makeup artist, uh, with Marilyn Monroe. And she, she bought uh, her used lippies and stuff for like $20,000 a lippy. I mean, people buy this stuff, you guys. Grace Chen, I'm, I'm with you. I want to see the catalog as well. For sure. Anyway. The House of Monet in Paris is well, is very well kept. The gardens and the house, and they have original furniture and what he used to paint. So it is sad. Yeah. Kev is like, can we block the Kardashians, the Wests, and Williams for bidding? From bidding. Oh, that would be lovely. If I can buy the catalog, I would. Probably not likely to afford anything from the auction. The catalog, I want the catalog as well. I wonder, like, do you have to buy the catalog? Or if you sign up for the auction, do they send you a catalog? Like, free of charge? I wonder how... I think you have to buy the catalog. No, they're not going to be there. The Kardashians, if they're going to bid, they're going to have somebody bid for them. It's all stuff that we're going to see on their KKK <laughs> website where they sell the stuff they don't wear anymore. Kim Kardashian closet, KKK. They spelled closet with a K, you guys. They spelled closet with a K. And you abbreviate it, and what do you get? You get the three K. I mean, these people. These people, seriously. <laughs> like, what brain cell is still functioning? If any. If any. Uh, you know, like... <laughs> Oh, Af, uh, <coughs> Af Carrot says you always have to buy the catalog. <coughs> They're not free. Mm. Well, it would be so cool to be in the auction in person that uh, itself would be like a museum trip. Yeah, to see them exhibit the pieces, I think. I think they also exhibit them before they go on sale. Possibly. Oh, the catalogs are expensive, Robbie. Well... You know, but it's a one it's a one and done deal, you guys. Like that's not a catalog that's gonna be reprinted. That catalog comes out once and it's done. Done. Never gonna be printed again. You know. Anyway, I have a topic for you. Let me tell you, listen, Linda. The Federal Trade Commission. The Federal Trade Commission submission permission. Where did you go? I don't know. I have a thumbnail. No, I don't. Wait, did I take? Did we prepare? I have no clue. I have no clue, you guys. <clears throat> oh, here it is. Okay, I found it. Hi, everybody. Jacob here. Welcome back to the Fashion Bunker. 
Is it yet again another step towards the end of luxury? Or perchance is somebody fighting for the consumer? For once, the Federal Trade Commission seems to be fighting for the consumer. And yet I not so sure. It almost feels like they have some really old fossils sitting in the Federal Trade Commission making certain decisions because why? Well, Versace is involved, Michael Kors is involved, Coach is involved. Big drama, mama. Let me tell you where it's at. But first, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Push the join button next to the subscription button. Become a member today. Gain access to extra perks. You can also join me on Patreon, Super Dakeable, spelled together there as well for extra perks. This video is being filmed live in front of a live virtual audience. I live stream several times a week, so come join the fun, come join the chats. Hello to my co chators. Um, so the, here's the tea. Now, you know, we, we shot a video a couple of uh, months ago we, when we were where we were talking about Versace being purchased uh, by Michael Kors. Uh, Michael Kors and Versace <clears throat> are under the parent company Capri Holdings. And then Capri Holdings is supposed to be acquired by Tapestry, that uh, Tapestry Incorporate. Tapestry Incorporate owns Coach. It's like a telenovela, or, I mean, it's the modern-day version of Greek mythology. Now, you know, when we say the Greek invented drama, it's because they had a gazillion gods they worshipped. They had a gazillion stories for those gods. Uh, the god that had an affair with another god, the other god that uh, was uh, secretly dating a human... And, and the god that had a baby with a human and the baby was a, a semi-god, semi-human. And then the jealous mother of the other god wreaked havoc and wrath on the population of some village because another god betrayed her for having loved the sister of the brother of the cousin. Of, I mean, drama. At, all the best Hollywood movies, sitcoms, telenovelas, TV shows, don't get fooled for a second. Just because you haven't read, you know, mytholo Greek mythology, it doesn't mean that uh, every single good storyline and every single good dramatic piece of film is directly connected to some story from Greek mythology. All the best stories out there today that you see in movies and on TV shows they're one-to-one -one copied from Greek mythology. Don't get fooled for a second. There is no intelligent genius sitting behind some Hollywood desk writing some incredible storyline that nobody's ever heard before. <laughs> Forget, girl, they're, they're none of them. They're all just copying blatantly what's already been done before. And what's been, been, what's been done before and really well, Greek mythology. So here we have an example of said Greek mythology where the gods of the fashion world are fighting with each other, having relationships with each other, merging with each other, but there's somebody trying to stop them. Somebody's trying to stop the Titans. And here's where we have to start debating, is this a good thing for us, the consumer, or is it a bad thing? Now, let me read to you what will we'll go, we'll go. So the fashion law posted, uh, the Federal Trade Commission, uh, lovingly called FTC, may be looking to block the $8.5 billion deal between coach owner Tapestry Incorporate and Versace and Michael Kors' parent company Capri Holdings. They're supposed to merge. <clears throat> Actually, we, we spoke about this a couple of months ago, the merger, the acquisition the acquisition already happened, but of course, you know, after the acquisition happens and the merger happens and then the consolidation of these brands on a global scale happens. And now that this is happening in America, the FTC is saying, while the deal is slated, is slated to create what has been linked, likened to the American equivalent of European luxury goods groups like LVMH, Caring and Richemont, the FTC reportedly has concerns that allowing Tapestry and Capri to operate uh, under the same ownership umbrella might limit 
the need for those brands to compete on price. This could in turn make their products more expensive for consumers. That's the gist of this. So, so the FTC is basically there to, to fight for fair trade and kind of fair, you know, to not allow just one brand like the Lord of the Rings, one ring to rule them all. They have to keep it. Yes, I know it's capitalism and technically in capitalism, sooner or later, one company buys out all the others and rules them all. That's kind of the end of capitalism. That's the end of the game. That's the end of the game. Game of Thrones ends with one person on the throne and nobody else loves them or likes them. And then everybody fights against them and usurps the throne and the system collapses and starts from scratch all over again. Really boring, very predictable, and kind of sad that we keep falling for it. But we digress. So FTC is like... This, trying to say, well, hold on a minute, we're actually here also fighting for the consumer because if Tapestry uh, Inc. and uh, the other one, um, the other one, uh, Capri Holdings, if they were to merge, there would be less competition for them because they would be just one company. So while these, like Coach, Michael Kors, Versace, used to be separate entities, separate companies, now they're all going to become one company. They used to compete with each other. Now they don't have to compete with each other. Now they can monopolize the market and decide internally, secretly, the prices they're going to make, and they might dominate the market. So the FTC is saying this might not be good for the consumer because a competitive market is a healthy market because then the brands might also, you know, say, hmm, let me try to be a little bit cheaper than my competitor so that I also can squeeze in a sale or two. And this is why I think the fossils are sitting at FTC, because I don't think uh, that uh, Capri Holdings and Tapestry are going to detain a monopoly. First of all, let's look at the facts here. Uh, they're not the only ones out there. You know, there's also Luxottica, who is a, another giant who bought up almost every other eyewear company in America and worldwide. But then we also got LVMH, another titan. Then we got Caring, another titan. Richemont, another titan. Chanel is still privately owned, but they're huge as well. They bought up a lot of small businesses. Another titan. So it's not like Capri Holdings and Tapestry Inc. or Tapestry Holdings and Capri Inc., whichever way. Uh, are the only ones, the, the sole proprietors of said powers uh, that be. I, Deborah C says in the chats, Versace already has a monopoly. A monopoly on bad taste. Oh, the shade, the burn. The thing is, though, that Coach, Michael Kors and Versace, mm, Coach at the moment is doing better. You know, people are liking their new offerings, but it's not like they have these like big successful companies that are selling a bunch, you know, all of these brands go on sale. You can't really compare, you see, to the big three that never go on sale, like Louis, Dior, oh, the big four, Louis, Dior. I know Dior goes on sale clothing, white, but not their bags, but, you know, Chanel, Hermes, those are the big players. They're monopolizing already the market because, I mean, there's nothing above them in, when it comes to fashion, at least, or leather goods. But um, Versace, Coach, and Michael Kors, even if they were to join forces and, and even if they were allowed to merge, if the FTC doesn't block them, they're still not going to, like, mess up the pricing. I don't think so. There's a ton of outlets that sell their stuff. They have their own outlets. Their collections go on sale 50, 60 percent at the end of the season. Even their bags go on sale. The quality is what it is. Um, I don't think this is a problem, them merging. If anything, I believe that them merging together would create lower prices because the desirability of those brands is not very high. The reputation is meh. So 
it's like three ratchet brands coming together. They're not going to be any more desirable or better if they come together. They're just going to realize even more the problems that every brand individually has. And they're going to have to tackle those problems. Their reputation on the market isn't that high. So it's not like they're going to all of a sudden say, oh, because the three of us are together, we're going to monopolize the prices. Really? I just think they're going to realize even more how tragic it, they are, really. And they're going to lower the prices, if anything. They're going to cheapen the brands, if anything. That's how I feel. That's what I feel happens when, some, when somebody goes multi-ballistic corporate it waters everything down. So you see, this is why I don't really trust the FTC in this case, like them saying, oh, well, we'll fight. we're fighting for the consumer because we want the fair, you know, type of trade going on. And we want the consumer to not have to pay exorbitantly high prices because uh, these brands merged together and now detain the monopoly over things. Maybe this rule would apply for food supply food chains, food production, like essential goods. That's where where my alarm bells would go off if, you know, many different food companies all of a sudden they're like, "Oh, let's merge together." You know, let's uh let's let's do let's let's merge together and then monopolize the price. Like that's that's a problem. That's something that I would try to block. But when it comes to these brands that are kind of already like mm, on the downfall, You know, when it comes to these luxury or semi-luxury, cheapish luxury level, I would be like, whatever, it's their downfall. The more they merge, the more they're going to submerge. You know, Deb says, oh, Jacob, the shade for the merger. But we have to remember that most people buy those brands. Most people don't buy luxury. We forget because we love it, but others not so much. No, Deb shops. I have a ton of Versace pieces. Don't get me wrong. Just because I'm saying it's a, you know, it's a bit ratchet, the brand. I still love Gianni. I adore Gianni Versace. Donatella is amazing. The stuff they make is, you know, at the moment, not so amazing. But it doesn't matter. I still buy Chanel sunglasses, clothing. I have quite a few apparel pieces. I, can't, I have quite a few Chan uh, Chanel. <laughs> Lapsus. Uh, I have quite a few Versace bags as well. Michael Kors, no. Coach, no. But I do have Versace. So it's not like I'm here sitting down and throwing shade and being a snob. No, like, I'm happy to see Versace on sale. Don't get me wrong. I don't think that having Versace on sale makes Versace look any less desirable to me. When they have a good, flashy, pop art design, oh, yes, I'm all in. I, I'm always going to buy Versace when they deliver the good old pop rock vibe. I'm all in for it. All for it. I don't care if it's tacky. I love tacky. Give me a, a good tacky. You know what I mean? When there's a good tacky, I'm in for it. Die in ferret. Live in ferret. Get the live in ferret merch right now. There you go. That's the live in ferret. Available now at www.superdacob.com. Let me plug my own merch. Thank you very much. But you can also get it on Amazon. Not all around the world, but in some countries, Amazon does sell my merch as well. Y'all, okay, so my humble opinion, in this case, merger is fine. I would have a problem. I would have a problem if, hear me out, if Hermès, Chanel, and Louis Vuitton were to merge. Because they're already at the top of the world. If those three were to merge into one company, game over. Game over. Imagine. <laughs> Imagine. That would be game over. But at the level of Versace, you know, Michael Kors and Coach, I think we're good. I think they're, they're going to become even cheaper if they merge. Now, Debbie says, uh, the FTC already stopped the merger of certain supermarkets or shops uh, that are, uh, you know, that are selling food. Of course, that's when you should block a merger because you should not allow just one entity, one corporation to rule over all food supplies and all food chains. Like that is the downfall of humanity. I mean, that's when you're going to see a loaf of bread cost you $150 just because they can because you have nowhere else to buy bread. 
except for from that one brand that owns all the other brands. So that's that's some that's something that's where the FTC does its job correctly and that's why the FTC exists you see so that we don't get screwed over as a consumer you need to have competition healthy competition my FTC doesn't always do healthy stuff but they're there to also oversee that none of this happens where then one entity rules over all the others and decides what price you're going to have to pay especially when it comes to essential goods like food I would put medicine also in there, but then in Europe, medication, still affordable. America, disaster. So you see something slip through the cracks in America. You see what I mean? Like some of those lobbyists and little sneaky, sketchy, let me pay you under the table, Mr. Politician. Can you pass a law for me? That's where, where shit goes down. Okay. In America, right? Uh, corruption is healthy, healthy, uh, doing well and healthy in, in the United States, unfortunately. But it's hidden underneath that thin veneer of democracy. Uh huh. I Y K Y K. Now, they should, Danny. They should oversee the pharmaceutical companies. So, my humble opinion is on the level. Tapestry Inc. and uh, Tapestry Group, uh, Tapestry merging with Capri Holdings. Zara says Tapestry Group is becoming the LVMH of the U.S. Let them. They're still ratchet. They're still going to sell you my... You're still going to end up finding Michael Kors pleather bags at TJ Maxx. You're still going to... Oh, yes, you are. Because I see them all the time at TJ Maxx. I also see coach bags at TJ Maxx. And I've also seen Versace, Versace jeans at TJ Maxx. <coughs> Pardon me. So, you know what I'm saying here? Like, been there, done that. So, FTC, they're wasting their time with this. They should focus more on pharmaceuticals and food. Humble opinion. Let me know your thoughts and prayers down below. And until next time, subscribe, thumb up this video, and never give up on love. Bye. Mwah. Yeah. What? Is there something here? I don't know, you guys. I'm seeing something. Yeah, I don't see it on my mirror. So, is it still there, you guys? I took it away. Uh, so there you go. Excellent topic, says Zara. Thank you, sweetie. Thank you, thank you. I agree with you, Jacob says, happy life. Thank you. They should oversee the pharmaceutical company, says uh, Danny. Deborah says, Versace is not for the shy. It's a young brand and works best in summer, but I can't get past the super the stack shoes lately. Oh, it's not that young a brand. I mean, you mean for, for young people? Not necessarily. MS would go on the hero's journey to defeat the three-headed Hydra, says Kev. <laughs> oh, Nancy, thank you, sweetie. I learned so much from you. Sh Shireen says, I still keep seeing Juicy Couture at TJ Maxx, and I always wonder if they are really considered a designer brand. Hmm. They are. You see, again, also Juicy Couture. I love it. It's trash, but I, I love it. it. It has its purpose. It has its meaning to exist in in pop culture and it had its time when it was really popular and now it's less popular but historically it has a context juicy couture you know they had their moment in the sun and they still exist and in some ways they're still relevant in a, in weird ways they're still relevant paris hilton also juicy couture britney juicy couture for sure 
you know. Rosanna Navarro, yeah. And Debbie, yeah, the Medusa logo from Versace is for everyone. It's not just for young people. Kev says, I heard Michael Kors is looking for his successor. I wonder if he would hire Mark Jacobs. Another tragedy waiting to happen. <clears throat> I mean, we'll go, we'll go. <clears throat> Now, I have another topic uh, about the... <sighs> oh, this is interesting. Hold on, let me just freshen up the powder. I'm getting oily again. Uh, and again, you, as you can see, there's a little bit of a light motif going on in today's live stream. Uh, prices and uh, affordability, destroying a legacy of something, merging, becoming something else, you know, Vivian selling the stuff. Uh, the merger of holding and tapestry and and now and also FTC thinking well maybe the prices are going to be too high then let's not maybe allow the merger to happen of course they're going to allow the merger to happen somebody's going to pay somebody off oh, honey allegedly Just noticing now, what the hell is wrong here? I think I have a chunk of makeup missing under my eye. Oh my God. Hold on, let me fix that. Only me, baby. Only me. This only happens to me. Uh, let's get the thumbs up. Thank you, Debbie. Yeah, thumb up the live stream. <clears throat> I have tried a few uh, luxury um, Atelier Versace fragrances in the past many moons ago, but I didn't buy any of them v -Sense. What a world, Danny. Yeah. A little bit better now. Um, oh, you thumb up on entry? It's only polite. Thank you, Deborah. Thank you for thumbing up. Winter Rose, you're so cute. Oh, Winter Rose, thank you. Very kind of you. Thank you. Uh, Debbie says, it's so cool you were all able to meet. Yeah, it was wonderful to meet up together last Saturday. Little tiny moment together. Oh, Debbie says, makes me so happy. Yeah, no, it was, it was, it was special. It was really special. So now moving on, <clears throat> the, the top, the next topic, chow my hair, it gets longer and longer. <laughs> uh, the next topic is prices and brands outpricing themselves, right? But then we find a way. What? I want to say life always finds a way. I want to say the wallet always finds a way, right? We always find a way to spend the money no matter... Um, no matter the prices, no matter the price tag. I know, Gloria. Yeah. Uh-huh. It's the prices. <laughs> so let's film the next one. Why is this like this? I don't even know anymore. My hair is ravenous, darling. Simply ravenous. Okay, this one hair just does whatever it wants. Sure. Sure, girl, you do you. <laughs> look, look at the separation. Oh my God, okay. <laughs> Hi everybody, Jacob here. Welcome back to the Fashion Bunker. So the aspirational customer is being outpriced by the luxury brands. Nothing new. We've been talking about this since a while now. Prices are skyrocketing. Chanel's bags are unaffordable. Hermes the same. LVMH lowering the quality and then like, you know, 
deleting, discontinuing certain products like, you know, Speedy 40, Speedy 35 without the bandolier. Like they just keep the expensive pieces, the more expensive pieces going, keeping upping up, keeping upping upping up the prices. <laughs> and it, they just make it harder and harder. And the aspirational customer has to resort to purchasing less and less and less. And of course, there's a retaliation of all of that. And a lot of these brands are now seeing complications as less and less people are purchasing. They, they were counting on the 1% of the rich, but now more and more, they're realizing oh, the 1% rich are not maybe the best solution to keep us afloat. We do need the aspirational customer after all. And what is more important, more and more news outlets are picking up on this and are reporting about it. In fact, WWD Magazine wrote an article called Handbag Sticker Shock, Try Springs Entry Level Luxuries Instead. Kind of sad, but it's become official. What does this mean? This means that mo more and more publications and more and more official outlets uh, are realizing how impossible it's becoming. Sorry, guys, I got a hair right there, how impossible it's becoming to purchase what they claim are called the hero pieces. Now, usually you, 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 you would call a hero piece an item, a prop, or an outfit, or anything from a movie that's been on camera, that's like the wig that's made for the main actor, the hero wig, and then there's like the lower quality wigs made for not for close-ups, you know, background scenes, what have you. So they now call the hero pieces, those expensive, high-ticket items that are the most aspirational pieces. Like, for example, the Timeless Classic double flap bag at Chanel, the Birkin at Hermes, the Lady Dior at Dior. Uh, all of that has become, you know, synonymous of hero. <laughs> The hero item. Isn't that bizarre? So I would just call it the scammer and the mockery. Now, everything I say in this video is for entertainment purposes only, not rooted in truths or facts. Everything's alleged and just my opinion. Also, while you're at it, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Push the join button next to the subscription button. Become a member today. Gain access to extra perks. You can also uh, join me on Patreon, Super Deco, for extra perks there as well. Thank you to my members and patrons who have already pledged. This video is being filmed live in front of a live virtual audience. So, Vsen says, funny, I went to the store today and had a conversation with the Creed sales associate. She said sales have dropped due to the prices. Not just in the fashion world, but also in the perfume world. In fact, Chanel just upped their prices to $500 plus tax, ending up to be around about $550 after tax for their 200 mil uh, Les Exclusives Eau de Parfums. I mean... <laughs> They used to cost 200 bucks in the past when they were the toilets, okay? Now they're up to 500. <clears throat> Just no. But the thing is, news outlets that report about fashion are now, and this is the sad part, reporting more and more about what are the alternatives for the aspirational customer and how the brands are gearing towards still making us spend money while not allowing us to purchase the hero pieces because they just have to keep them out just out of reach to keep us aspiring towards them dreaming about them so that we so that they never let us go so that these brands never leave our minds brand marketing 101 baby and so th the price increases are an issue but the solutions are this so for example in WWD's list of alternatives and you guys, we're going to go through this list together, and I want to know from you, is this warranted as aspirational customers? Now, some of my viewers might be aspirational viewers. Some might be the 1% rich. Some might be some might be here by accident and don't even care about fashion. But hey, here you are. You're here. Somehow you, find your, you have found your way to me. So... Um, Example for Prada, this is so sad, but their Prada example, they say, you know, Prada sells its famous, shall we say, infamous nylon for a lot of money. And you can buy ginormous nylon bags, whole outfits in their famous nylon, but they also have entry-level price 
uh, entry level category, which could be, you know, a headband made out of the nylon. I mean, this is so sad. Lily. <laughs> And also they list Tom Ford together with Prada saying that both of them also uh, have jumped. Have you noticed? Tom Ford earlier than Prada, but Prada has joined the club of jumping onto cosmetics. They've already had their perfumes. Tom Ford's perfumes don't fall under the affordability category because his perfumes cost even more than Chanel's perfumes. But Prada has initiated their makeup line and they want you to buy their makeup. Their makeup is the entry ticket, entry level ticket item. So they're listing like, here are interesting alternatives for you. You can buy the, aspir the aspirational customer can now buy Prada's makeup. Can you believe this? And then um, they also say that... Uh, <laughs> Batsani, explain out well, who does Batsani work for? <clears throat> I, I think some uh, reporting agency about uh, consumer relations or consumer behavioral patterns. And they state that uh, girl math is factored into aspirational customers' purchases. So now girl math is entering into daily rotation when it comes to calculating earnings from companies. Now they're hoping that the girl math is going to make you purchase more. And they think that girl math leads us to, they're really about, they're really all about use per wear. But Sani explained, and fragrances and lipsticks are meant to be used up. She recommends small accessories and lower tier ready to wear styles as really the way to go. Apparently people want the cost per wear factor when they're purchasing said items. So the aspirational customer and the brands are trying to find ways to cater to that need is purchasing things that they can wear as much as possible, use as much as possible. In other words, it's a trick because obviously with makeup and cosmetics, the more you use them, you use them up. At a certain point, they're empty. You're going to have to purchase them again. They're not forever. But small accessories with a logo visible might allow you to feel like you're wearing part of the brand while you're just wearing a brooch or just a hair clip that has a logo on it. But it doesn't matter how big or little you are, how tall or small, how much you lose or gain weight, an accessory can always fit you. If, granted, it's a hair pin or a brooch, not a, you know, t-shirts, depending on pants, depending on your size, how it fluctuates, you might not be able to wear them all the time. Plus, with clothing, if it's not a classical cut, it might go out of style. So you're going to be a little bit more hesitant to spending a lot of money on clothing when it comes to luxury items. So, but uh, the cost per wear is becoming an interesting element when it comes to jewelry. Because jewelry, high-end jewelry, doesn't have to be haute jewelry, but fine jewelry from these brands could be something that aspirational customers are looking at because you, en you can wear it all the time. It doesn't tarnish or it doesn't tarnish as quickly. It can get wet. I mean, if you're wearing gold, you know, it's not like gold oxidizes if you put water on it. If it's crappy gold made with a crappy alloy, maybe. But no diamonds. Diamonds make stuff cost more, right? And Prada is playing that game. We've seen Prada just release a couple of weeks ago. They're uh, lab-grown diamonds and they're charging us a leg and a kidney for them, and people are standing up and saying, this is bullshit. Like, why are you charging, like, tens of thousands of dollars for lab-grown diamond? Give me a break, girl, you know what I mean? But they are, and they think they can get away with it, so more power to them. Um, but cost per wear, apparently, brand marketing is trying to shift cost per wear as they're noticing that the aspirational customer wants cost per wear, they factor that into their purchase uh, pa behavioral patterns. So now the brands are trying with brand marketing to make you believe that makeup is really good cost per wear, except they don't factor in the element that we're not that stupid and we realize that makeup, well, you use it up. And we know that it's not a cost per wear that's perennial, that's forever. It, it's very limited in time. And also makeup expires. If you don't use it after a certain amount of time, I mean... 
Underneath every makeup palette, there's a sticker that has a date. It says here, after opening it 18 months, you can use it 18 months and then it's expired. Now, most of us go over the, the date that says on the back of, you know, sometimes it's six months, 18 months, 24 months, 36 months. But uh, I've been using stuff even after the expiry date. And I mean, I take the risk. I would never tell you to do so. I do so for myself and I've been okay-ish till now. But I don't factor that in when my purchase... Uh, behavioral patterns. Now, another thing, they also mention Hermès and Chanel. <laughs> and here they give a tip, like what you should buy if you cannot afford their 10, 20, $30,000 bags. Like there's alternatives. And this is so sad. And they say that, and this is where the hero pieces come into play. And the hero pieces are, uh, uh, the hero pieces play factor into this. So let's say the Kelly bag or the Birkin. They have the turn lock, the famous Birkin lock. So they say, well, if you want an element of the hero bag, you can't afford a Birkin and a Kelly. Well, they're not going to allow you to buy it even, right, if you don't have enough. Well, there's a lawsuit going on. We don't know. Hermes claims you don't have to purchase anything prior to purchasing, to being offered to purchase a Birkin and a Kelly, but we digress. So they say that now Hermes is implementing, and I have a couple of those pieces as well. They say that uh, Hermes is taking the Kelly lock and placing it on bracelets, belts, shoe buckles, uh, necklaces whether it be a turn lock on a leather necklace or on a, you know, costume jewelry necklace with a little lock hanging on it, or even a miniature little Kelly bag as a necklace made in metal or gold. And they're saying like, well, that way the aspirational customer can have, you know, can feel like they own a part of the Kelly and the Birkin, even if they don't really own anything of it. Um, you know, poverty, poverty. They keep saying aspirational customer, but they but they mean poor. So it's poor. Play, you know, poor plays with the poor. <laughs> poor customers. The poor customers are going to buy the turn lock. And brand marketing thinks that in their mind, they own a piece of the Kelly. For Chanel, WWD's example is the timeless classic double flap, which has recently been printed on their silk scarves. So WWD is saying, why don't you just buy a Chanel scarf that has the 255 or the timeless classic, I, I think they meant the timeless classic bag, printed on the scarf. How stupid do they think we are? First of all, and this is a note to WWD magazine, I don't believe that everybody out there is purchasing said items because only because they cannot afford the big ticket items. Some of us have the big ticket items, but we also like to purchase these other items because they're whimsical, they're fun, they're playful. Honestly, you know, WWD is implying in their article, they're telling the aspirational customer, Buy the scarf instead of buying the bag because you're poor. You, <laughs> WWD Bags is like, hey, buy the scarf. It's awesome with the bag printed on it because you're poor and you cannot afford to buy the actual bag. I find that really ridiculous. Personally, let me guys know. What do you think? Let me know in the chats or in the comment section later and thumb up this video. But... I, for example, really loved when it comes to Chanel. Now, go check out my uh, fan account uh, with photos that I take of my Chanel collection and Chanel pieces that I like. Uh, Dacob CC, all spelled together on Instagram, Dacob CC. And uh, years ago, Chanel released a gorgeous uh, silk carré scarf. I wanted the beige one, 
there were other colorways, but I wanted the base in beige, classic Chanel beige, with, in black, printed on top, all over, the slingback Chanel shoe. Now, I own several pairs of Chanel slingback shoes. It's not that I couldn't afford the slingback shoe, so I wanted the scarf. No, not at all. I just really loved the design of that particular scarf with a ton of Chanel slingbacks printed all over it like an abstract painting. I found that really, really gorgeous. And my sales associate had to hunt it down for me. It wasn't just like, oh, here, we have a ton of these made because, you know, people who can't afford the shoe are gonna buy the scarf. So WWD, you're so wrong about this. So wrong. Nico S says, some of these affordable items are so overpriced anyway, it's crazy for someone to tell you to buy something you don't even like just to be a part of the brand. I completely agree with you, Nico S. But at the same time, I'm saying, I love the Chanel perfumes. I don't consider these to be entry-level ticket items. Oh, I can't afford the bag, so let me buy a perfume. In what world, WWD Magazine, do you think we live in? We're not that desperate. We might be borderline poor or poor, but we're not desperate. First of all, the Chanel bag does not smell like the Chanel perfume. I love the way their perfumes smell. Love them to bits. Love them to bits. Love them to bits. I prefer the perfume to the bag because it gives me way more emotions, history, vibes, everything. I love the smell of the Chanel 255 bag, but the perfume is the perfume. So I don't, I don't think they're comparable. I don't, I don't think that, I mean, maybe the brand marketing thinks, well, you know, $500 better than $10,000 for the bag. But to me, this is magic. Love it. And, when, and especially, especially when I wear this perfume and I'm out and about, I don't have a logo on me. It's not like I'm spraying double C's, liquid double C's all over my body and you get to see double C's liquefy on my body. Nobody knows I'm wearing Chanel. When I wear a Timeless Classic double flap, there's a double C turn lock on that bag. You best believe people are going to see it's a Chanel. So I paid more for the bag than I did for the perfume. But when I pay more for the bag with the double C logo, I am a walking advertisement for Chanel. So I pay them more. At the same time, I'm giving them free advertisement by carrying their logo out and about. With the perfume, I'm not giving them any advertisement when I wear the perfume out and about. I-Y-K-Y-K. -Y -K. Uh, so poverty, I think not. I think this article is poverty. And that's what I'm thinking, um, you know. Because according to, to shopping ex expert, again, Isabel Bazzani, aspirational customers get a lot more excited about uh, wear per use, um, especially when they have in-store experiences because it's rarer for them. So now WWT Magazine and Batsani imply that the poor customer uh, can only afford to shop online and can never afford to even enter a luxury boutique. So when the poor ass customer finally, you know, collects their money and once in a blue moon musters up the courage to enter a luxury store without having the full-blown fear of being judged. And once they enter the store to be able to purchase that one lipstick, they really treasure that experience of going into the store forever because they're poor. Are you for real? Like, are you for freaking real? I mean, do some research. Do some research. Even the rich, rich people are valuing more and more and more purchasing in-store. It's, I, you guys, I, and this is, you know, and I have the feeling a lot of these news outlets and these magazines and these fashion places, they're reporting about the state of affairs from such a sick perspective. They have a contorted vision of the world, very simple vision of the world, very, very simple vision and judgment of people of like what you are who you are according to how much you can spend and if you can't spend well then you have to behave like this rather than like that that could not be more far away from the truth 
That could not be more far away from the truth. Nay says, my income bracket makes me beyond below aspirational customer. I don't like those kind of little items. That's not how it works. J.W. Miller says, these are opinions, not facts. Shani D says, wow, let's be real. Most people don't live near a boutique, so they must shop online. Everyone doesn't want to live in a big city. That's also a great point. But to, but to make it sound like the, you know, the, the poor customer, uh, for them, it's a special extra treat to go into a boutique. I'm like, are you for real? What are we, podlings? What are we, podlings that, that, that came from the dark crystal? Love me some Jim Henson. And we're like, eh, the, the Skeksis are the luxury brands and we're scared that they're going to suck our life force essence out of us, IYKYK. If we go into their chambers, I'm like, girl, that's not how the world ticks. And also this fear mongering. Because what articles like these do, if you are reading this article and you are that aspirational customer slash what they think poor, they think like, haha. Gotcha. Now you're going to, you know, now you're going to get even more scared to enter these shops. Don't be scared, people. There's no reason to be scared. Your money keeps those rich ass people moving afloat. No matter if you're spending the 10 bucks for a lippy or 40 bucks for a lippy or 40,000 bucks for a full blown outfit, doesn't matter. Every to them, money is money to those brands. A dollar is a dollar. They do not distinguish between the dollar that you gave them or the dollar that a rich ass person gave them. Every, they, they count their coins greedily and hungrily as if they were poorer than you. Trust you me. They count their coins at the end of every evening. I've seen the desperation in the faces of the sales associates and the store managers towards closing time right before the shops close, how they stand there counting all the money, like those eyeballs bulging and them like, mm -hmm. you know, let me see if I meet, meet the quota of the day. They're desperate. Every penny counts. And the desperation, if there's a discrepancy in the cash register, if there's a nickel missing, even though they made a million dollars that day, they will behave as if it's the end of the world. They will lock everything. They will not anybody from the workers. Ex if there's a brooch missing, that happened once as well when I was in a Chanel boutique. Shortly before they closed, uh, my sales associate was like, oh God, now we got to stay here and the security has been called. I'm like, what's happening? She's like, no, no, you can leave, but we have to stay here because a brooch has been stolen. So now all the co-workers have to be inspected and, you know, touched all around and all the bags open. Heaven forbid somebody were to find the brooch. So don't let these, you know, articles mess with your brain and make you feel lesser than. Because, honey, trust you me, even the CEOs at the top, they're counting their pennies just like you and me. So call a spade a spade. Let me know your thoughts and prayers down below. And until next time, never forget to never give up on love. Love you loads. Bye. Gloria says, oh, time has come. I got to go. Night all. Night, Mahora and Debbie. Uh, good night, Gloria and Athenos. Oh, hi, Mahora. Hi, DD Bean. J.W. Miller says only 40% of sales come from rich uh, customers. I read that somewhere. Um, it keeps shifting, but yeah. Aspirational is where it's at, baby. Shani D says, I've seen people be scared. I don't care. They don't know what I have. So I don't care what they think. Period. 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 Nico says, Deco, I live in the United Arab Emirates. The rich local ladies treated the boutiques like a Walmart. When Hermes opened where I lived, the locals uh, opened drawers themselves and took sandals. No one said a thing. That's a cultural discrepancy. Just because they behave vulgar doesn't mean that we have to behave vulgar as well when we are in Europe or in America. Because honestly, I have seen that behavior when I was in 31 Rue Cambon. It was vile. Vile. I'm sorry, but get an education. That's not how you behave. Maybe you behave like that in the, Emir in the Emirates, but that's not how you behave when you go to Europe. 
learn the culture of the people you're going to go to visit and behave accordingly. Don't behave like you own the place. That's disgusting. So there was this one woman who entered. She snobbed the sales associate. This was in Paris. Treated the sales associate like dirt. Did not want to look them in the eye. Started yelling at them like they were her personal servant that she was used to mistreating. I was like, are you f for real? No, apps, no. So the lady started crying. I mean, it was such a mess. So then the manager stepped in and took her away and then took a more psychologically stable sales. And I was like, just kick that bitch out of the store. No, we need the money. We need to make the sale. That's a rich person. Oh, I see. So you are desperate for the money, to earn the money. So you're ready to sell your soul to the devil for, for a penny. But you're making us aspirational customers feel like we're shit. Right? Oh, they need them. Oh, yeah, they don't have the money. Oh, yeah, really? Well, how are you behaving in the store? You let them walk all over you when they do have the money. It's embarrassing. 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 Really? Chris says, I recently had to purchase a Kelly belt from Hermes online. When I went in store to try on, the sales associate recommended that I keep an eye on the website because it was stocked more frequently. That is true. It's really hard to find them within the boutiques. They're usually sold out. Kev says, they probably pinned it to a shopping bag by mistake. The quality is quite similar. You understand. You understand. More frequently online than in physical store. Wow, another Karen lull, right? Deb says, I agree. When you travel to another country, you must take an effort to be familiar with the customs of that country. J.W. Miller says, it's not easy to work in sales. It's terribly difficult to work in sales. You need the patience of a rock. You need the patience of a rock. We're 198 likes. Thumb up the live stream. Thumb up the live stream, you guys. What gives? Let's get to over 200. Let's get to 300 likes. You realize the brand is desperate, and when a super rich person walks in, the whole air of unattainability disappears. Exactly, Nico. Exactly. Uh, they have that air of God. They're like, you know, oh my God. Oh my God. Ugh, disgusting. Ugh, so vile. So vile. Embarrassing. Nancy says, I saw a woman lose her shit in an Hermes store in Zurich. Because she wasn't treated like a queen. Deb says, um, never should you treat a sales associate with disrespect. That is a no-no. How can they be that hard up for a bag? It's not about a bag, Deb. She's just used to behaving that way at home. You are a servant. You're serving her. She's coming to the store to be served by you. And she, in her culture, is used to shitting on her servant, treating them like lesser beings. So she thinks in her single digit IQ brain that every other person who works in the service industry should be treated lesser than. Just because her culture, culture is messed up doesn't mean that she can mess up other people's culture too. Danny says, I had a woman spit in my face when I managed the toy store because her child wouldn't get a high-end toy. She was arrested. Good, as she should be. Jesus Christ, what's wrong with these people? Oh my God, the audacity. The audacity. But Coco Cat sometimes, right, for our standards and our culture, we say those are narcissists and psychos who think that they're entitled. But for them, in their culture, that's normal behavior. You see what I mean? It all depends on the culture you come from. In their culture, that's normal. In their homes, that's normal. That's how everybody with money behaves towards people who don't have money who serve them. Debbie says, I have stories too, being abused in Vegas by gamblers, LOL. Jeez, Louise. And, and you know, it's not like the times are getting better. They're getting worse. The crying baby gets the milk, says Happy Life. Remember that saying? The crying baby gets the milk. In this case, the mean biatch gets what she wants. Well, I mean, 
she was put in her place, but she was not kicked out. She was not kicked out. The MSA says, I find treating each other with respect is the most important value, no matter the background, position, etc. Disrespect is so disgusting, it literally makes my skin crawl. Me too. Mine too. Some people do not have the character to be a parent, yet they become parents. Oh, Rosanna Navarro. Bigger truth has seldomly been said. Here, here. Here, here. Hi, Sylvia. How's it going, sweetie? Hi, doll. Hi, Sylvia. Single digit IQ brain, Af Afke art, right? You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Oh, Corey's a one word bridal. <laughs> Too long to type happy life, says Debbie. Um, yeah, I know. A lot to say from the banana to the other stuff. Caroline says, treat people how you want to be treated. Uh, you see, Caroline, that's another cultural aspect. I feel in our culture, that's part of our education. We are taught, some of us are, uh, from early on to treat people how we want to be treated. But believe you me, in some cultures, they don't educate people that way. They would educate people differently. They would educate people, treat people accordingly to their monetary and social status. In some cultures, they're gonna tell you that. In some cultures, they're going to tell you, yeah, spit on somebody who has less money than you. While in other cultures, they're going to say, no, treat everyone the same. It's a cultural thing. To me, it also borderlines to lack of education, but, you know, some would beg to differ uh, because, again, cultural differences. But uh, easy, easy solution. I don't go to those countries. I don't visit those cultures. I don't want to have anything to do with them. Now, them coming over to visit us, that's their problem. <laughs> you know what I mean? They got to adapt <laughs> because they're on your turf. So they got to adapt, you know. Turn the other cheeks, says Kim. Mahora says, wasn't it the same in medieval Europe? Even after medieval Europe, it was the same. Of course it was. But we have evolved, thankfully. In some respect, we have. In some other respects, we have devolved. Deb Shops, you're right, Jacob. It is how they treat servers. I was house hunting and visited a home of some surgeon from uh, from there, and they had a small hidden room with no windows behind the fabulous kitchen for their servant. DMSA says, and you never know what people go through. Just smiling at them, being nice to them could literally make their day and help them push through. We gain nothing being disrespectful or mean, nothing. I agree. Coco Cat sometimes says, people be people. No one will change that until one, one see the problem and activity works on changing it. I won't have a couple of customers who, who did not like the paper my print was on and that they wanted to buy in the gallery. They literally had me come over with my stock of prints. I was still young. Wow. Love DIY says, I'm grateful that I have always had the opportunity to rise above with love, which is a very rare trait. Liz M says, I worked in customer service many years and also men of certain cultures don't like to be assisted by women. Oh, no, they do not at all. They do not at all. At all. Liz M says, uh, so uh, DMSA, but if people disrespect you, oh, honey, don't hold back getting them together in your culture. But again, if you're traveling around and you're going to another country, don't expect them to tick the way you do. That's another mistake, you know. Happy Life says, I always remember that just because I had a bad day doesn't mean the other person's day is any better than mine. So I make sure to treat everyone with kindness. That is good. Back in the 80s, when ATMs were new, a person from out of state spit on me because I wouldn't or couldn't by law give her ATM card back to her after she tried her pin three times. The machine ate her card, says Corey K. Wow. 
Nancy says, in candy shops, I offer to buy salesperson if I can buy some candy for them. People love it and it's not expensive. That is so sweet. Super sweet. Super sweet. Oh, yeah. Oh, Coco Kate. Two wrongs don't make, a right, don't make it right, for sure. But don't forget. Don't forget. It's not just culture. It's morals. Different morals. In, in different cultures, different morals. And to explain this to you, it's relatively easy because if you just look at our own civilization, uh, whether it be America or Europe, uh, morals have changed just in the past 50 years. Uh, what is morally accepted today in America was not morally accepted just 10, 15 years ago and vice versa. It's a different moral code of conduct. And the same applies to law. And I, I say this almost every live stream, you guys. Law and morals, two different things. What is legal isn't always moral. And, and what, is, what is moral isn't always legal. You got to know a lot. You got to be street smart. And you got to tackle a little bit in, in the you know, basic knowledge of law and, and, and culture to be able to really navigate the bumpy waters uh, of our society today. Everything, you guys, everything from applying for a home loan, uh, applying you know, for, for a job, application for anything, talking to a colleague, going to the doctor, dealing with... Uh, with the hospital, with the emergency room, talking to the IRS. <laughs> All of these instances, uh, looking to purchase an insurance policy. All of these are minefields built by the system to trick you to make the mistake and scavenge off of you whatever they can. And it's up to you to be street wise, street smart, and navigate those shaky waters to get to the other side, to get to the safe shore without drowning on the way there. But the system is built to make you drown. It's up to you to find a way to stay afloat. It's not a given. It's not a given. And that's the tragedy of our times, that the system is fighting against us. The masses are slaves, basically. You know, the money is taken out, taxes, money, corruption to politicians. And to navigate every, everything, so everything costs money. I mean, just renting a storage unit is a scam, allegedly, because they offer it to you at a relatively affordable price the first year, and then the second year they know you're hooked because you got all your shit in that storage unit. They start upping the price. What are you going to do? You're not a first-time customer anymore, so too expensive for you? Well, pay a truck to move all your shit to another storage unit in a, for an, with another company. You know most people just end up paying more and more and more every year. Everything is built to scam you out of whatever little money you got left. So it's up to you to be that clever, to navigate those waters. And, and this is why, you know, it, you guys, it, please, what I'm about to say now, do not misunderstand this. I really do not have a political agenda when it comes to presidents or not presidents, whatever. You know, I love you. I don't care if you vote for Biden, for Trump, really. Love is love. Love has nothing to do with these individuals. But when somebody comes to me, and I get in the comments a lot of people, some are pro-Biden, some are pro-Trump, and I love it. I love the fact that I have both sides liking me and talking to me, because to me, love is above all of that. But in a system like the one we're living in, this capitalist Occidental first world system, especially in America, that is built on tricking you and taking your last nickel out of you. Okay. To learn to navigate that system and to navigate the loopholes 
to be able to not just barely survive, but to be able to thrive in that system. That takes street savvy. Now hear me out. When people, you know, you say, oh, the rednecks and the this and the that and, you know, they vote for Trump. Wait, hold on a minute. Don't discredit anybody, okay? Don't throw shade at anyone. Let people speak their mind and say what they got to say. What I think happens a lot is what people see, like, in, in Trump. Oh, there's a person who, yeah, he can be scammy, this or that, whatever you want. Hold your horses for a second. But he's also, to many people, an example of a person who found a way to go through the loopholes of the system to make it. Granted, again, we're back at the core of our conversation. Morals are very different <laughs> than law. And also the morals change. To some people, what is morally acceptable to others is not. So, I can see how a lot of people look at a certain figure in politics and they look up to them and say, look, here's a person who doesn't let the system mess with them. They find their crooked ways, whatever, to defeat the system, the system which is made to defeat you. So I'm not sitting here blaming anybody for voting for anybody. It's not like we got a choice, you guys. Uh, we got A or B. And both choices are like tragic, in my opinion. But it is what it is. We deal with what we got. We deal with what we got. But it's, it's, it's tough. It's really, really difficult for the little man to survive. And we're not talking about living. We're talking about surviving. Bare essentials. Having a roof above your head, paying for food. Okay. They're ripping you apart wherever they can. From every angle, they're coming at you. Several years ago, a person I knew uh, needed to go to the hospital, and they have an insurance, relatively good insurance. And this was in America. Oh, Catherine, thank you so much, my love. Catherine donated $20. You are the one and only live stream I try to catch whenever I can. Adore you, Jacob. From the Lenormand readings to your socioeconomic commentary, you are truly appreciated, heart. Thank you so much, sweetie. The tip of shame. 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 Hit it, Bubbles. Mm. Oh, this was a good timing. Thank you so much. So generous. Thank you. So I'm just saying... We are in a position where, all right, so, so this person I knew, right? So they have a relatively good insurance. This was in America, California. But they, they had an emergency. The ambulance had to come to pick them up. Now, they're already paying a ton of money every month for the health insurance, which is a good one, a solid one. The hospital charges were covered by the insurance, except the ambulance fee not covered by insurance. $3,000? $3,000 to get picked up by an ambulance and driven to the hospital, which is 20 minutes away or 15 minutes away from home. $3,000? This is what I mean when I tell you it's the system that is wrong to the core. We have to change the system. It's not about fighting with each other. Oh, you like Trump. Oh, you like Biden. Who cares? They're up there. They're not. The, the system is down here. This is what's wrong. This is what's wrong. Trump, Biden, they're just bubbling up in the surface. They're kind of the foam of the system. But the system is here. This is what we got to work on. Much deeper. We're in deep shit, you guys. And uh, it breaks my heart when I see people fighting about, like, oh, this politician, that politician. I'm like, you guys, you're just being blindsided. You're just, like, wasting your time fighting for all the wrong reasons. You're wasting your energy. 
The system wants you to waste your energy. The system wants you to waste your money so that you are exhausted. By the time the actual change needs to happen, by the time you actually got to step up to make a difference, well, you got no energy left to actually make a difference. You have no energy left. You've waste. They tricked you into wasting all your energy for the stupidest baboonish fights that you could have online or at the dinner table with your family and friends. I've seen entire families fall apart because of some stupid fucked up debate about politics. What a waste of life. Seriously, what a waste of life. Joyful Remorse says, we paid $2,500 for a three-mile trip in the Wee Woo Wagon for my husband last year. There you go. There you go. I'm not telling you bullshit. I know what I'm talking about. There you go. Here's another receipt for you from Joyful Remorse. Odd Pink Ray says, recently my trip was 400 bucks. Still insane, but at least better than 2500 Afka Art says, 3000 is cheap. It could easily have been 20000 But it's, but you guys, we are so screwed. Exactly, Jocelyn. That's the key. We truly should see that we are all in this crappy system together. The system wants to separate us so it can control us and dominate us. Only if we're separated can we be manipulated. If we unite, they're screwed. But it's in their interest to keep us separate, separated. Divide and conquer. That's right, Deb Shops. Divide and conquer. So, forgive me for having mentioned these politicians. It was not my intention to make anybody upset if you're voting for one person or the other. Like I said, I respect you no matter who you vote for. But I used those two names as an example to explain myself better, to make you understand my position. That's, all, that's the only reason why I mentioned those two particular individuals. But other than that, you do you. I really, you know, I respect you no matter who you vote for, seriously. Um, it's very important for me to make this point clear. Monarch says, oh, I was so afraid to call an ambulance, I just drove myself. I was lucky I was only five minutes away. I put my hazards on and just drove. And this is so sad that we're risking our lives because we're scared that the ambulance is going to charge us $3,000. So we're, who knows what sort of ailment you got going on. You're dizzy, maybe you broke a bone, or maybe you're hemorrhaging internally. And you still have to have enough lucidity in your mind to say, you know what, I'm going to drive myself to the hospital just in case because that's, that tells you everything you need to know. The system is not working. Anyway. So, who's at the door? Bubbles, is that you? Knock, who is it? <laughs> Hello. <laughs> you guys. Hello. Hi, Bubbles. <laughs> if you don't know, this is an Easter egg moment. Uh, I'm going to show you something so you understand what's happening right now. So uh, this was, you guys, you always have to hunt for the special secrets in my thumbnails because they're always very, they're done on purpose. But uh, this was the thumbnail today. The thumbnail for this live stream. Bubbles generated the background. This person right here, Bubbles made this person. This is one of the shoppers that. <laughs> Three eyeballs, baby. Three eyeballs. <laughs> 
This is Bubbles tackling the system. <laughs> This is how Bubbles sees, uh, this is Bubbles' interpretation of a poor customer. <laughs> the, the, the triclops. So um, I told Bubbles, uh, generate, a, uh, generate a background that uh, is going to have luxury for the poor. The concept is luxury for the poor. And, uh, and, bu <laughs> So uh, we'll go, we'll go, <laughs> we'll go, we'll go. You understand? You understand? Um, Nico says she has a third eye. She can see the stock. She knows you have a Birkin in the back. <laughs> Bubbles for next president. That will straight up the system. Let me tell you, Bubbles is gonna zip it and zoo it. Bubbles is gonna zip it and zoo it. Oh for sure. Hi Patricia Casey. How's it going, sweetie? Uh, but I have a more uh, lighthearted uh, topic for you uh, next. Um, uh, wait, hold on. So, <clears throat> okay, luxury brands, new headache, stingy shoppers returning their goods, erasing up to 75% of their sales value. Now, um, this particular article is quite fascinating. Again, end of luxury. Let's talk. Hi, everybody. Jacob here. Welcome back to the Fashion Bunker. There are several articles circulating at the moment about how luxury brands have a new headache. Stingy shoppers are returning their goods, erasing up to 75% of their sales value. <laughs> Who would have ever thought that online luxury shopping might have just been the downfall of the luxury shopping system altogether. Is it though? Let's check it out together. First, subscribe to my channel here on the tubes. Push the join button next to the subscription button. Become a member today, get access to extra perks. You can also join me on Patreon. Super Dacob all spelled together there as well for extra perks. This video is being filmed live in front of a live virtual audience. I live stream several times a week, so come join the fun, come join the chats. And uh, luxury brands have been pushing, uh, also everything I say in this video uh, is for entertainment purposes only, not rooted in truths or facts, everything's alleged in just my opinion. Thumb up the video. <clears throat> luxury brands have been pushing lately a lot, uh, depending in the markets where they earn the most money. So uh, for the longest amount of time in the tens, it was Russia, then their eye shifted towards the Middle East, and then it shifted towards South Korea, Japan, a little bit less, and then the main focus became China. Now India is also on the forefront, but China. And then, of course, the pandemic happened, the lockdowns, Chinese customers at a certain point stopped purchasing, European luxury brands were shook because they were really counting on the Chinese money, honey. But now, after the lockdowns have ended, apparently Chinese shoppers have started buying again. However, a lot of these luxury brands, European luxury brands that also sell online in China, were expecting a huge surge in sales. And a surge they did get. But what they did not expect was the amount of returns. Because you see, as uh, several articles report, apparently in China, uh, so the luxury brands, from what I understood, they commission or pay companies to fulfill shipments for them. And they also pay insurance companies to uh, fulfill said shipments for them and to cover the loss in case something gets damaged or stolen. 
So a lot of the companies in China offer you incredibly simple orders and um, kind of basically the whole process of shipping to you, you inspecting your goods, you like it, you don't like it, and then shipping it back. Returns are super easy, apparently, and free of charge. And said luxury brands don't really care much about it because they are paying a third company that takes care of returns, postage, and everything. But during China, and here, one of the articles, uh, so this is Fortune, and Fortune.com took it from Bloomberg.com. Bloomberg took parts of it, I think, from Reuters. You know, they all kind of snatch it from each other. But uh, we digress, and everything allegedly... So during China's biggest single-day shopping festival last November, listen what happened. Upscale labels like Ralph Lauren, Burberry, uh, Group PLC, and CA Financière Richemont, uh, net apporté saw purchases far surpass their wildest dreams and expectations. Those seen just a year earlier on the mainland's dominant e-commerce platform, Alibaba Group Holding Limited's T-Mall. But within days, some brands saw up to 75% of that sales value vaporize as customers returned or canceled purchases in droves. People familiar with the matter said asking not to be identified discussing private data. This unusually high rate of returns, well above the 20 to 30%, that consultancy Stanford C. Bernstein considers normal in the global luxury industry has persisted since China exited COVID-0 more than a year ago and is sparking a reevaluation of the way some fashion labels do business in the world's second largest economy. The majority of marketplace users are middle class, a group highly exposed to the country's ongoing economic slowdown. Once a backbone of big ticket um, discretionary spending, they're now seeking discounts or shifting away altogether from pricier purchases. Platforms like Tmall have rolled out more frequent prom uh, promotions to boost sales, but the returns trend threatens to undermine efforts. The trend worsened in the first quarter of this year as Tmall return and cancellation rates for Italian luxury house Brunello Cucinelli, SPA, soared to 69% from 59% in the same period a year ago, according to, a pe to people familiar with the matter. LVMH owned Mark Jacobs shot to 43% compared to 30%. In the first quarter of 2022, they said, Richemont's Chloe, Ralph Lauren, and Mulberry Group, PLC, all experienced similar rises in returns and in cancellations in the quarter compared to the same periods in the past few years, according to the people. Now, Tmall is one of the largest official bazaars for global luxury brands in China. Now, what is fascinating here... Uh, Mark Tanner, managing director at marketing agency China Skinny, said, I can imagine there are plenty of people in the luxury category taking out and showing off a luxury item for an evening, earning the status, and then returning it at no cost. There are definitely signs of luxury softening, which I am sure is driving the opportunists to get a free showing. Tmall said luxury brands continued to deepen their cooperation with the platform. The unverified figures provided by Bloomberg are materially off base and at odds with actual brand operational performances on our platform, a Tmall luxury pavilion spokesperson said in an email. Global luxury brands have continued to launch and invest in the flagship stores on Tmall as a cornerstone of their China market strategy. So what happens here is they take into consideration the initial orders. So let's say they launch a collection from all of these brands in one go, like within one week, there's an activation for all of these collections. People f flock into, in, in droves onto the e-commerce and order a ton of stuff. That's within the first week of launching. Then it takes a week for it to get shipped and delivered. That's then the second week. On the third week, people wear it. 
And by the fourth week, people start sending back. Now, the numbers that these e-commerces deliver to their shareholders is, of course, the first week of sales, right? When they actually launch the collection, that's where the numbers are really high. That's where they can pet themselves on the shoulder and say, look at us, we sold 70% more. I'm just shooting a number here randomly. 70% more than last time, last activation, yeehaw! But then they zoo it and they zip it what happens three to four weeks later when said products mostly over 70% get sent back after the person is wore to special occasion and it's like, you know what? I want my money back. I don't want to keep this piece. Now, we've seen this happen already years ago with influencers, you know, the influencer buying a certain product to show it off and then bring it back the next day to get the money back. But in the meanwhile, they get their views on their YouTube channels and they get the AdSense revenue and the sponsorship money. And they get clicks and views because they're showing a product that is highly covetable, expensive, not easy to obtain, not everybody can afford. And then the next day they return the item. But they keep the views on their channel and they keep the AdSense revenue and the sponsorship deal revenue from said videos. So China catches up with this practice and does the same. Wow, Otpin Crane in the chat says, Amazon told my son to stop returning purchases. They cannot say that to him. If he has a reason to return them, if, he, if it's legally okay to return them, then he can return them. You know. Coco says, in a moment, they start charging restocking fee for returns to keep up with losses. Well, they can't because then people are not going to even order on the launch date anymore. The reason why people in China according to this article, started ordering in droves is because the return policies were loosened up and made very simple. In some cases, this article states that the return policy is so simplified that you can even cancel an order after it's been shipped but hasn't arrived yet to you. So in some cases, people get refunded their money. So you order a product, it gets shipped to you on the way to you you say, ah, I want to cancel. They're so loose with their policy that they accept your cancellation. They refund you the money. A couple of days later, the product actually arrives to you. They know that it arrived to you. You're going to have to send it back. And, you know, if, if you're a crook, you won't send it back, but it'll catch up with you sooner or later. But, like, they trust you so much that they give you your money back before they get the product back. Like that's how simplified they've made ordering just to be able to amp up numbers on release date of certain products. Aiming higher. Rates have been pushed higher by shoppers increasingly requesting returns and cancellations before their products are even shipped. The TML promotional campaigns allow buyers who meet certain spending thresholds to obtain discounts even if they later return some of their purchases. So they've simplified even this. So basically, you've built up your profile, your customer profile, even though you've been buying, returning, buying, returning, buying, returning, they still keep your profile high. And then you start getting discounts. And then at a certain point, they're like, hey, you're not, you are now our VIP customer. So now you're going to always get a 20% discount when you order because you've been ordering so much from us, even though you've been returning everything you've been ordering. And then a lot of people order even more to build up their profile to be able to get the 20% discount. And of course, these companies can then say to their shareholders, look how many people order from us, a ton. And the system is collapsing, you guys. You see how this is not sustainable? Um, that's encouraging people to game the system by ordering expensive items just to secure the, re the rebates. Uh, the sales. While immediate refunds don't cost Tmall or the brands themselves logistics and shipping costs, the requests mean that initial sales figures are artificially inflated. The weakening consumer sentiment has already ens uh, ensnared some uh, ensnared some uh, global luxury brands. LVMH reported slower sales growth in the first quarter with revenue at the group's fashion and leather goods unit its biggest division, rising just 2% in the three months through March compared to the 18% from one year ago. 
Last month, Caring SA saw $9 billion wiped off its market value after it warned of slumping China sales for their star brand Gucci. The returns issue has not affected labels at the highest end. Hermes is still kicking butt. Chanel and Dior as well, which have limited their reliance on e-commerce channels and sales campaigns. And look how Chanel comes triumphant out of all of this. They knew it was coming. They knew the system was going to collapse. That's why Chanel never developed an e-commerce for their fashion and accessories. Sunglasses, like eyewear and beauty, yes. Even though they were very late to the game, Chanel developed e-commerce for their beauty and eyewear. But that's it. Chanel never went into e-commerce for clothing, bags, shoes, costume jewelry, none of that. None of that. Very, very clever. Because now, now they can reap the benefits of all of this because their customers have been taught and educated. Okay, you want to buy Chanel clothes? You go to a Chanel boutique. Or you have a connection to a sales associate and they can send it to you. Uh, you, you pay. There's a link that they sent you. You know That can be done, but only if the sales associate trusts you. Otherwise, no. No way, Jose. Is there, are, are they going to do that? It's like they knew it was coming. It's like they knew it was coming. Isn't that interesting? Very, very interesting. Um, this hard-to-get strategy, which Chanel uh, implements in particular of limiting e-commerce, which focuses on cultivating wealthier customers, has meant sales have remained resilient amid China's slowdown, said Jacques Roizin, managing director of China Consulting and Digital Luxury Group. Frequent participation in promotions risks damaging brands' image, making them less appealing to those who are still willing to spend. Still, Tmall has lured some labels to participate with promises of divert more traffic their, to divert more traffic their way, hard to resist as the middle class's appetite for luxury is declining. Online orders accounted for 42% of the mainland's total high-end market revenue last year, according to consultancy Yauk Group. In fact, China's e-commerce giants are making returns and refunds easier than ever. Platforms like Tmall and JD.com Inc. require brands to allow customers to return purchases with no reason given within seven days. Many brands purchased insurance provided by the channels that covers the costs of return shipping for shoppers. Recently, platforms have begun allowing consumers to request refunds on items over issues including shipping delays or service quality without even having to return the items. Still, due to the outsized influence and reach of China's e-commerce platforms, premium brands can't afford to walk away. Said Angel Angelito Perez Tan Jr., co-founder and CEO of RTG Group Asia, which operates businesses including a luxury consultancy, instead they've been investing in more concierge services, immersive experiences, and private sales to build long-term one-on-one relationships with wealthy customers. Bain & Co. forecasts China's luxury sales will slow to the mid-single digits this year, down 12% from 2023, and remain primarily driven by high net worth individuals, those with investable assets worth more than 10 million yuan or 1.4 million US dollars. There's a clear refocus towards very important customers, Tan said. The increase in product returns highlights the imperative for luxury brands to refine their strategies for the Chinese market. It's a mess. And the European luxury brands that have been relying on the Chinese market so heavily are so screwed right now. This is why we have the end of luxury as well. Because they're like now, oh boy, they've alienated their local customers. I know because I'm a local customer. I've been alienated because there was a certain period in time when they were like spitting on us. They just cared for the Chinese tourists that would come in in flocks and buy, like, they would be like those grasshoppers, you know, that, that like fly in droves and like just mess up an entire crop. They eat everything and then they leave an empty void 
That's how Chinese cust uh, Chinese uh, tourists would come into luxury boutiques, buy everything and leave. So the sales associates were also, the brands were also spoiled, rotten, you know, because these tourists were not questioning anything. Oh, that's the price. Here's the money. Here, take my money. Take my money. Just give me everything. Give me everything. And then, of course, a local customer like myself enters the store. The locusts. Yes, Avke Art. A local customer like myself enters and I demand quality for that money. And I buy one product, not 20. And then at one point, the sales associates were like, honey, we ain't got the time for you. You're just not worth it to us. I'm like, really? Okay. Times will change. And times have changed. Now, I'm getting emails texts, messages, almost on a daily basis from sales associates that ignored me a couple of years ago. Now they're begging me to come in. Oh, look at the new piece we just got. Look, we thought of you. Well, we miss you. We thought of you when we, when we received this new item that nobody wants to buy. And I'm like, uh-huh. Oh, I stay polite. Of course I stay polite. I stay polite, I answer all of them, and I say, oh, I miss you too, sweetie. Thank you so much for thinking of me. But right now, I just cannot come by. I'm super busy. And I'm like, you know, and then I tell them, I'm traveling, I'm here, I'm there. I would have loved it. Thank you, though. Thank you so much for writing me. Love you loads. Cha 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 <laughs> Come on, two can play this bullshit game. Interesting times ahead of us. In a good way for us consumers, by the way. In a good way, I believe. You know, Robbie says, oh, that we miss you always makes me laugh. Yes, you miss my money. You don't miss me. <laughs> oh, yeah. Milk says, many of the sales associates at the mall near me cater almost exclusively to Chinese customers. They're really shifted and catered to that demographic. Oh, yes, and also the fashion brands have started designing for that demographic and that type of culture. You know. Coco says, uh, yeah, don't burn bridges, but see the fakeness. Exactly. Be PR about it. Be very PR about it. Give them their own medicine back. Speak in their language. Oh, we miss you so much. Oh, yes, I miss you too. But I, unfortunately, I can't come by. Yeah, you understand. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts and prayers down below. Thumb up the video, subscribe, and until next time, never give up on love. Bye. Yes, Jacob, I got two emails this week from luxury sales associates that I don't shop with often sending me pics of their new merch. Right, Deb? And a couple of years ago, they wouldn't shit on ya. If it was your dying wish to get a photo sent from them, they would be like, who's she? Now they're like, oh, look, we were thinking of you. We miss you. We miss you so much. Joe Flora Moore says, I live near a coach outlet, and they always have someone who speaks Mandarin working because of the Chinese customer base. They come in and buy huge amounts of bags. Yeah, well, times have changed, honey. Mm. <sighs> Time for us to take over. Harness the power of the consumer. Because... The power is in our wallets. It always has been. They wanted to make us believe that we don't have the power. You know, somebody else is spending more money than you, so you better spend more, otherwise we're going to keep ignoring you. Aha, uh -huh. I see how you're ignoring me now. You're begging, ferret. You're dying, ferret. Get off my back. Got it? <laughs> Corey says, I got six calls this week. Wow. Yeah. Because they want you to, to buy stuff. Oh, yeah, it's funnier when they send you birthday wishes. I mean, I like when Chanel sends me birthday wishes because they send a beautiful card usually, and the cards are, like, really well done. So I'm not angry at the cards. But a text message, like an email, happy birthday, when are you going to come to visit us? I'm like, do you have a birthday present for me? You do? Then I'll come. Otherwise, like, what the hell? It's my birthday and you're telling me to come visit you so that I spend money? No. Debbie says, what big eyes you have today, Deco. Really amazing. I'm channeling my inner Christina Ricci today. 
I love her eyes. She has huge eyes. And Winona Ryder. Um... Uh, Corey's like, yep, my birthday is this week on Wednesday. So, so they know. So they're all writing you. Robbie, I got, so Chanel does really beautiful things for my birthday. Uh, well, thank you. I spent all my money there. But they gave me flowers, beautiful flower bouquet last year, really beautiful flower bouquet. I got champagne, got a bottle, <laughs> got a full bottle. And I got a nice, uh, a nice little gift as well. Coco uh, Kate sometimes like, uh, donated ten dollars. Enjoy the live show. Love you. Thank you so much, Coco Kate. Sometimes enjoying your live show. Love you, Dago. Well, love you too, sweetie. Thank you so much for the generosity for helping out the fashion bunker. Remember, tipping your host keeps the sponsors away. Shame the tip of shame the tip of shame. Hit it, Bubbles. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you, Sweetay. Sweetay, Sweetay, Sweetay. Um, oh, Jocelyn, I love Sleepy Hollow, the version with Christina Ricci and Johnny Depp. Yeah, Christina's amazing. At my local Louis Vuitton, they have signs that talk about how they accept Chinese payment method, etc., because the Chinese customers are so common there. Yeah, they want the money. Money. Rosanna says, LOL, don't bother me. It's my birthday. Saying that to the sales associate. Oh, Milk, thank you so much for becoming a tier one member. Thank you, sweetie. Thank you so much. Um, I hate when they give you these 10% code for your birthday that never applies to the items you want to buy. A uh, classic. I don't even look at those anymore. Kev, I don't even look at those anymore. They're classic. So, so stupid. Um, Another topic, 11 luxury travel accessories rich people always buy. This one's going to be a doozy. Another topic I prepared for y'all. Uh, and Yahoo Finance, yahoo.com. It's going to be a doozy. I oh, love you too, Milk. Thank you. Thank you so much. So let's see what Yahoo has to say about the rich. Hi, everybody. Jacob here. Welcome back to the Fashion Bunker. Uh, Yahoo.com and Yahoo Finance are talking about 11 luxury travel accessories rich people always buy. Always buy. Now, let's let's look at, listen, Linda, let's look at these items. I mean, it's a doozy. And uh, do we agree with this or not? Or is Yahoo trying to tell us, hey, you want to act rich? Buy this. Hmm. I do wonder, did they add any links Affiliate purchases, per chance. Oh, well, we'll see. But anyway, everything I say in this video is for entertainment purposes only, not rooted in truths or facts. Everything's alleged and just my opinion. Subscribe. Push the join button next to the subscription button. Become a member today. Get access to extra perks. You can also join me on Patreon. Super Dacob, all spelled together there for extra perks. Uh, thank you to my members and patrons who already pledged. This video is being filmed live in front of a live virtual audience. Hi, co-chators. So like I said, everything is alleged, okay? For every luxurious travel item, there's a serviceable counterpart that will get the job done by wealthy people, but wealthy people often prefer the luxurious to the ordinary. <laughs> Are you ready? Okay. <clears throat> the rich may, may be motivated to spend lavishly on luxury travel accessories due to their desire for social status and recognition. Or they may feel pressure to keep up with their wealthy peers. Additionally, they may simply value owning and using luxury I luxurious items. Thumb up the video. Bling, bling. Thank you if you're enjoying it. First point, premium luggage. Apparently, according to Yahoo, while the average person is likely fine with buying their luggage at a discount store or ordering value price luggage through Amazon, the wealthy often have different preferences. Bitcoin, Birkin, Hermes, Mr. Beast. 
Bitcoin Birkin. R-Y-K-Y-K. Premium suitcase brands like Remova have their luggage dialed, paired ultra lightweight material. Lightweight materials. The last time I saw a rich person do a Remova, it's heavy. Heavy. Remova is heavy. It's not light. The aluminum suitcases, just a carry-on, like they usually, I mean, if you're traveling coach, I guess if you're rich, you're traveling first class, but they give you like a 10 kilo max. The suitcase empty is eight kilo. <laughs> like, give me a break. Um, not only do Remova protect their valuables with ease, I've had a lot of people report to me, sending me pictures of the Remova suitcases being damaged after one flight, wheel broke off or whatever. So anyway, Yahoo is telling us Remova for luggage. The latest high-end mobile technology or mobile technology is point number two. They say, when it comes to gadgets, my clients expect only the finest Apple, Mophie, or Kindle products, Medearis said, some consultant for some luxury. While price is relative for this demographic, it's less about status and more about preference. Ensuring work or play is always just a tap away. You don't need to be rich to own an Apple item. The latest high-end mobile technology. I mean, come on. This is like, what, like only the rich buy a latest mobile technology? Girl. Yeah. Next point, upscale toiletry kits. And I thought to myself, oh, goody, goody, goody. I love it. My favorite little toiletry pouches from Louis Vuitton. I was like, oh, these are going to be, these are going to be listed. These are going to be listed. I love them so much that I have several. <laughs> yes, my family of toiletry pouches expands. But no, no, it's not the Louis Vuitton. They, they're talking about finally no jet lagged socialite or busy entrepreneur feels complete without a beautiful crafted cosmetic case from the likes of Bag Smart or Anya Hindmarch. Medearis said, I think Medearis wants to sell these brands. Organization is king for these globe trotting multitaskers, and having items neatly tucked away brings peace of mind. Bonus points if the accessories themselves spark joy, reflecting individual tastes and lives lived to the fullest. Mm. Mm. Really? Nah. Nah. Mm -mm. CS says, my Remova wheel was broken uh, too. It always gets dented, which is fine, but break the wheel, I don't know who to blame. Cheap wheel or bad handling? Cheap wheel, baby. Cheap wheel. Deb Shop says, they buy the polycarbonate. The aluminum will get banged up. So, but those bags aren't that good anymore. They were better before LVMH. That's when I bought my set and it's still going strong. Oh, there you go. Designer packable Backpacks, next point. Fashion forward back, sorry, fashion forward packable backpacks let wealthy travel travelers carry essentials hands free in luxury style without bulk, said Stephanie Writing, travel expert and the founder of France Adventurer, where she off, and again, there's a link affiliate, blah, blah, blah. Oh, come on, Yahoo, zoom better, zoom better. Where she offers custom itinerary planning for people who wish to visit France. Allegedly. Collapsible nylon designs from labels like Dior, Gucci, and Longchamp pack small, but feature leather accents and cost between $500 and $1,200. Their lightweight versatility enhances comfortable travel. Yeah, but they break so easily, you guys. If you're going to travel with a backpack, you should buy a sports brand that is specialized in making heavy-duty, heavy-wear backpacks for adventures that don't just like rip and tear immediately. They're not just fancy to do a selfie photo shoot for Instagram, but actually can carry something without ripping. And that also feel comfortable on your back. Ergonomic, in other words. Next point, noise canceling headphones. Matthew said that noise canceling headphones, such as the Bose noise canceling headphones 700, which retail for around $380, are often preferred by the rich. This is so stupid. Not only the rich buy noise canceling headphones, you guys, they offer a serene and uninterrupted travel experience for those who highly value both comfort and 
performance from this type of gadget. Yeah, because the aspirational and the poverty customer wants noisy stuff, of course. Next point, monogrammed leather passport holders. And I thought, oh, monogrammed leather passport holders? I have one from Louis. I thought, oh, now Louis is going to come into play. But no, Louis doesn't come into play. Guess why? Think about it. Why did Yahoo not mention Louis Vuitton? Because Louis doesn't have an affiliates link that they can earn money off of. So, they're telling us monogrammed leather passport holders, but they're telling us that the luxurious passport holders um, are crafted in finest leather, stamped with traveler's initials, uh, blah, 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 like, uh, uh, what's that brand? The... Oh, Deb Shop says the rich do not buy Bose. Or, or Bose, or Bose, whatever, however you want to pronounce it. Um, Grace says, if they are really rich, they have private jets to separate them from noisy, aspirational, and poor travelers around them. I'm just thinking, depending on what sort of rich person you are, I mean, you might not even like to travel and you'll send somebody else to do stuff for you. You know what I mean? I don't know. Cashmere travel wraps is the next point. An ordinary fleece blanket that can be bought at your favorite big box retailer or picked up at the airport isn't preferred by the rich. Instead, one made of cashmere is a more likely pick if you're rich. Matthews again. Uh, said that a cashmere travel wrap, and he drops a brand name here, uh, which retails for $325 and up, allows wealthy travelers to wrap themselves in luxury with a sumptuously soft cashmere, ensuring warmth and comfort during their journeys. <laughs> Silk sleep masks. Another point that apparently the rich adore, according to Yahoo. Although the average person would likely be fine with a cotton sleep mask for 10 bucks or even a silk version for around 40 bucks, the rich often need an additional layer of luxury in the form of a designer emblem, such as the silk sleep mask Gucci offers, which retails for around $400, says Matthews. Why don't they mention Hermes with their Petit Arch collection? And they have these like crazy ass sleep masks made out of silk and leather that look like superheroes for flying on, but why don't you list Hermes? Customized leather luggage tag sets. Another point, just like monogrammed leather passport holders, customized leather luggage tag sets in various colors and emblazoned with one's initials are favored by the rich, says Matthews. While a set of plastic luggage tags would do the job just well, luxurious designer tags make a status statement and perfectly adorn the premium luggage. And again, I'm thinking about Louis Vuitton. But here they mention, personalized luxury luggage tags can cost over 200 bucks from the companies like Lucrin or Lucrin. Lucrin. So, next point, travel size luxury skincare sets. A curated selection of skincare essentials is a must for the wealthy traveler who wants to keep their skin glowing throughout their travels, Matthew said. An example he gave was from luxury skincare brand La Mer, which offers travel size skincare items from $100 to $330 each. So those were the points. I got to tell you, I, I ain't rich. Like, I don't know what they consider rich. I mean, I'm not a billionaire, so I'm not billionaire rich. And I can tell you, all of these points is like stuff we all travel with. We all have a suitcase. We all have a backpack. We all try to take with us smaller creams for our beauty routine when we travel. It's nothing new. Every customer, every person who's traveling thinks ahead and tries to minimize the weight of their luggage. They take smaller samples of beauty products to travel. I don't do sleeping masks, okay? So that's not me. But just because I don't, I just put a blanket over my head <laughs> if I want to sleep and I don't want the light. I have my passport holder. Yeah, I do. I have that. That's maybe something not everybody has. A lot of people just travel with a passport without the passport holder. But I can tell you one thing. I travel a lot and I can tell you that the passport holder really does help. It's a very, very practical gidget. Very practical gidget. I know. Love DIY. This article. Such a pip. Such a pip. Um, 
Noise canceling headphones, I personally don't use them, but I do own a pair. Weekender bags. Oh, I didn't read that point. The weekender bags. For wealthy travelers who prefer something they can stow in the overhead compartment when flying or neatly fit in the trunk of their car, a duffel bag won't likely do. However, a weekender bag fits the bill. Matthews, owner of the old hammam and spa, who is attuned to the desires and preferences of his distinguished clientele, said that the wealthy often prefer to travel in style. He gave the example of an elegant weekender bag from Tom Ford, which retails for thousands of dollars. These luxury designer bags are crafted from supple leather and feature spacious compartments to accommodate all of the travel's essentials. Now, yeah, I have a weekender bag. You know. Like, what is this? Like, I don't understand it. So basically, Yahoo is telling us, together with Mr. Matthews, that only the rich have a weekender bag? Really? Hmm. Upscale toiletry kits? Really? The latest high-end mobile technology, an Apple device? Really? <laughs> anyway, premium luggage. I mean, I, I get it. Somebody wants to show off. You know, they want to buy their Remova, whatever. But give me a break. I, I have friends who are not rich and they got Remova lug luggage too. No big deal. And they all break it. <laughs> Allegedly. Uh, but um, that's it. Let me know your thoughts and prayers down below. What a doozy. <laughs> Pardon me, pardon me while I go and do one of my affluent hiccups elsewhere. Subscribe, thumb up the video. See you next time. Never give up on love. Hi, Audrey. You have a weekender bag? Good for you. Kev says, can somebody explain to me the passport holder things? I love a passport holder. Catherine has become a member. Thank you so much, Catherine. Thank you for becoming a member, sweetie. I know, Afke Art, you're just like the rich, you have a weekender bag. Cecilia says, good morning, everyone in the fashion bunker. Good morning, Cecilia. Twinning in Tokyo says, my husband is Japanese and I have a very tall, handsome Chinese friend. And whenever I shop with either of them, the service is top tier. Oh. That's a good one. Angie says, the rich probably travel with nothing on them as their personal assistants carry it all. That's the biggest luxury if you're rich. You know, you just, you just walk in your little jogging pants through the security. You don't carry anything, just your passport, and you're done. And somebody else is schlepping everything behind you. Thank you, Audrey. Your passport is one of the most important legal documents. You want to keep that thing protected. Yes. First of all, passport holder covers up the cover of your passport, so not everybody around you sees what country you're from. Second, passport holder keeps your passport from getting all dented when you put it in a bag and it doesn't get all busted. The passport lasts a couple of years. You don't want to get it ruined before it expires, and hence you got to make a new one. Passport holder has several compartments. It holds your tickets, plane tickets, train tickets, bus, whatever ticket you need. But it also has compartments for notes and money, also cards. Very practical. I cannot live without my passport holder, and I've had it for over a decade. Shani D, I use my Speedy 35 as a day-to-day -day bag, not as a weekender bag. It's too small for me as a weekender bag. Uh, I use the Speedy, I use the Key Paul 50 as a weekender bag. For me, the, the Keep All 50 is my weekender bag. Speedy 35, day-to-day -day bag. Day-to-day -day bag. <clears throat> yeah, fruit gummy. The weekender bag, AKA spending the night bag, exactly. It's, it's an overnighter for me too, yeah. Apparel says, Remova is rampant in East Asia. They are so commonly seen that at this point, it is a bit tacky. It's show to carry a Remova. 
Bucky Forty Blinks doesn't crush your eyelashes and blocks all light. I always love one on me. Oh, interesting. Happy Life says, right, I agree, Dacob. Thank you. Dacob, do you use a passport card? Brenda, yes. I just said it. I've been using one for over 10 years now. One of the updates for Louis Vuitton is they are adding the 40 for the Speedy to the lineup. But Grant, so it's coming back, the Speedy 40, the regular classic Speedy 40 in monogram with a handle without the bandolier. Or is it with the bandolier? Kath says, oh my God, just waking up my dog. It's 7 a.m. in Ireland, so glad you're on. Well, hello, Kath. How's it going? In the Irish, in the Irish landscape. <laughs> to do my, my Irish accent just for you, my love. <laughs> F. Delmar says, the rich don't even pack themselves at times. My mom works a millionaire, and she's responsible to pack the family's luggage. There you go. Brenda's like, I, I, Audrey, I just woke up. <laughs> To join the live stream, like, I'm tired, girl. What's your... Kev says, do you have to take it out of the cover to show TSA agents? Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Sometimes they tell you, can you please take it out of the cover? If I don't want them to touch my cover, I take it out before they can touch my cover. But sometimes they like to touch it. They want to... They like to touch it. They like to touch it. And then they, like, snatch my cover. I'm like... Oh, da, 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 da. Sometimes I just let it, I slide it through, you know, and then they're like, and then they open it. Yeah, there's, it's a whole other world, Kev. Once you have the passport holder, you're going to realize it's a whole other interaction. It's a whole other psychology. Hi, Kari. Good morning. And the stars. Hello. Good morning. Hi, CS. Everyone needs a passport cover. Hello. Well, would you leave the house without a top on? Exactly, CS. Exactly. Well, somebody would. Uh, DMSA, no, we didn't talk about the toiletry pouches coming back, but they're coming back. <laughs> but I don't like the interior cover. Oh, no, we did mention it at the beginning of the show. I, I don't like the interior colors that they're doing now. You know, the Kirigami pouches worked with those covers because it's leather interior, but they're doing the plastic interior for the other one, for the... They're doing the plastic interior for the toiletry pouches, so... Hmm. I want the beige interior again. Um, I always have a passport cover, but very often at a passport control, they want you to take it out. Yes, it's fine. You take it out. It's a conversational moment. Brenda's like, I'm going to buy one. Oh, yeah, passport cover. I'm telling you, it's a whole vibe. It's a whole vibe. It's a whole different interaction with TSA. It's a whole different interaction with whoever you're showing... It's also kind of psychologically, you give it, it's an extra added layer of privacy. And I think psychologically does something to whatever agent is checking you out. It's like you're showing them I'm a private person. It. it it really changes everything, really. And I've been using them for over 10 years. It's a whole different vibe when I travel, when I have a passport holder. Um, oh, my God. We had a 400-plus spike when I mentioned Birkin. When I mentioned Birkin, Mr. Beast. And uh, this is insane. The algorithm. You see, everything is just, it's just a dream. We're in the matrix. Debbie said... 403, insane algorithm. I remember Debbie. Yeah, I saw it while I was filming the topic. Debbie said, uh, we had a surge. Um, Audrey's like, everybody going out and buying a passport cover today. But you can't just buy any passport cover. It needs to be, it needs to have, I know, as lame as it sounds, it needs, get yourself a Louis. Louis Vuitton monogram passport cover. Do yourself the favor. Do yourself the favor. So we mentioned algorithm, Mr. Beast, 
uh, cryptocurrency, which was um, Bitcoin, Hermes, and we had a spike in views, like it jumped to 400. This is insane. Oh, YouTube, how we love thee. Well, to celebrate the spike in cryptocurrency, let me gift you five memberships. Let, let Jacob gift my people five memberships. Okay, are you ready? Come on, Buble. Come on, Buble. I love you too, Blue Egyptian Lotus. <gasps> and, I, and I love the Blue Egyptian Lotus. Come on, Bubbles. Gift. Gift the memberships to my people. Gift the memberships to my people. And there you go. Patricia Casey was gifted a membership by Super D. <laughs> Cecilia Brown was gifted a membership by Super D. Nat was gifted a membership by Super D. In the words of Maria Draganova, ta 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 ta. <laughs> when she unboxes something, love you, love you, Maria. In the stars was gifted a membership of Super D. Abigail Clodely was gifted a membership by Super D. Are those my my five my five memberships? Did I did I miss somebody? Did I mention everybody? It was everybody mentioned. Everybody was mentioned. Well, there you go. We'll go, we'll go. Welcome to all the new tier one members. I hope you've enjoyed the little membership gift and sweet. Don't forget, don't forget, don't forget that airy, airy, first Saturday of the month, you do, uh, even tier one members get to join the pre-show on a Saturday. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. You do. So, not, the, not next Saturday. The Saturday after that will be the first Saturday of the month of May, baby. Tier 1 members, as well as Tier 2 members, Tier 1 patrons, as well as Tier 2 patrons, all alike get to join the pre-show. Even today, we had a pre-show. It was Tier 2 members today. It was a two and a half hour live stream before the main live stream. What is said and happens in the pre-show stays in the pre-show. Boy, did we throw some major shade. Tea was spilled, honey. Blue Egyptian Lotus, how do we get gifted a membership? I always see them gifted, but don't understand how it works. So... Blue Egyptian Lotus, first in the upper left or right corner, depending or lower, depending if you're watching me from a tablet, from a computer, or from an Apple device, or from a Samsung, uh, you have to opt in to accepting gifts on my channel. Once you've opted, you click on I accept gifts from this channel. Once you've opted to accept gifts from this channel, then Whenever there is a gifting suite, uh, it's a random raffle, and a Bubbles picks randomly five people. But usually, if you are watching my channel longer, if you are more active in the chats, if you are watching me for longer time during the live stream, your chances at winning a memberships, uh, membership go up. You know, because... Bubbles, of course, favors people who actually really are interested in watching me. So, you know, it's a special treat that somebody wins if they like my content, not somebody who randomly passes by for five seconds and then leaves again, obviously. It's better to gift a membership for somebody who can actually benefit from it in terms of spending more time together or having extra perks like the emojis and the badge of honor, <laughs> you know. There you go. We'll go, we'll go. Angie says, Hermes, Tarmac, Passport, Actually, you see, I never he leave home without it. I have my little Speedy 35 a year. So wait, so who said that the Speedy 40 is coming back? Is the Speedy 40 coming back without the bandolier? Is the Speedy 40 coming back just with the handles? Because if it is, I'm going to buy one. I'm definitely getting one. Um, Chris, the membership, you can purchase a membership by clicking the join button, which is next to the subscription button. Oh, uh, Blue Egyptian says, I always try to catch you live, difficult, but sometimes to catch live uh, because of your work. Speedy, oh, bandolier, Shani D. Yeah, I don't want it then. They can keep their bandolier, I hate it.
my passport holder always with me. Now let me take the shit out of the passport holder. <laughs> we'll go, we'll go. Okay. Audrey Jane. Oh, wait. Chris, thank you. Chris, become a tier one member. Thank you, Chris, for becoming a tier one member. And Audrey has been a member for 37 months. This is a membership uh, super chat. Best subscription I've ever purchased. Audrey, my love, thank you so much. Check this out, y'all. This is the passport holder that I've, that I've had for a decade now. So it holds up quite well. And I do shove this and throw this in every bag I have. And if I have a shirt with a pocket, I put it in my pocket here. Uh, and it's leather on the inside, right? And look how thick uh, these layers are. Mine was made in France. I got lucky, but I bought it in the boutique, in the sh in the shop itself. So there it says made in France. So when I went to Louis, I asked them, do they have a passport holder? And then, uh, of course, they showed me and I opened it. It said made in France. I said I wanted. They sold it. I was happy. Yay. So I slide the passport in here. So the cover of the passport is then here. Like, you know what I mean? Here I have a $5 bill. So let's say this is my passport. So you slide the back of the passport in there and the front of the passport here. So this is the cover of the passport. You can open it like this and already set it up to your page with your face. So technically, when I'm going through boarding, uh, and sometimes they wanna see your passport, and I already have the page set open to my face there, right? I just kind of do this. I lift it, and they see Lincoln. They're like, well, that's not you, Jacob. That doesn't look like you. Well, I said, we'll go, we'll go, we'll go, we'll go, we'll go. Uh, like that, right? And then if like TSA wants to see it, I just, you know, slide it out, give it to them, slide it back in. Also, also what is really cool for the plane tickets, uh, I, I slide, you know how plane tickets are long? So I slide them here in the back and I always bend them so that this side has the barcode for my plane ticket. I always slide them in, bend them like this, passport here, ticket here, I close it so I never lose my tickets, like my tickets always close with my passport. And sometimes you have those like automated uh, opening door, sliding doors and they want you to scan your ticket for the door to open. So I already have it on my scannable side and I just open it, put it down, scans, doors open, lift it, close it and I move. The cash that I took out, it, I always have a little bit of cash in the back, like that. Like a little bit of cash is in there, a couple bucks, just in case to tip people and stuff, you know. So, yeah. And then here you have a slot for some cards. Here you can also put like a business card or a little note if you want, you know, if you, you know. That's it. I love it. Love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. Love it. With time, what is going to happen with this uh, glazing? But don't be worried. It's how these. This one is almost. Like, this one is like ten years old now. So with time, here your glazing is going to start chipping, and down there as well. It is what it is. It's a product you use all the time. Oh, Audrey's like puts the passport cover in the basket. I'll FOMO. We'll go. We'll go. Wait, did you buy it? Yes, Audrey, it still smells like Louis Vuitton leather. But it also smells like airplane. You know how an airplane has a particular smell? Now it's it smells of leather and airplane. It smells like travel. Yes, Patricia, inside is leather. This is a classic uh, Louis Vuitton leather that they put inside of there. Oh, Audrey's like, no, no, I didn't buy it. I want a vintage one if I bought a Louis Vuitton. Oh, okay. Well. Ah, Kev is like, cha, I'm convinced. 
<laughs> Kev, Kev started the conversation by saying, like, I can't believe, like, who would want a passport holder? End of conversation. Kev is like, okay, I bought two. Uh, I bought the monogram one, just like, you know, and then I bought the other one as well in the um, Damier Eben. <laughs> Oh, on Pink Ray says, my Louis Vuitton uh, passport cover is epi leather, 10 years old, going strong. There you go. Hi, Lily Lux, 22. How's it going, sweetie? Kevin's influences, Audrey. I wish I could get the commish. A little rhyme. Catherine, exact same MO for me. Duty stores also need that boarding pass scan, and I do the exact same bending maneuver. Yes, Catherine, brilliant shopping minds think alike. We're always ready to scan and buy. I do that at the, yeah, at the cash register duty free as well. Like, where are you traveling to? Like, scan it. Ding, ding, ding. They're like, oh, okay, I got you. I got you. Um, Brenda's like, Jacob, you're the influ ultimate influencer. We're all buying passport covers now. I mean, I mean, oh, oh, oh my God. Kev says, easily influenced. I bought both packing cubes after the discontinuation scare. Did they receive? Are you liking them? Did you get your passport, uh, your passport cubes? Your packing cubes already. What do you put in the small slots of the passport holder? Here you can put your credit cards. Here you can put your ID. If you have a plastic ID, you can slide your ID here or a business card. And here I put my tickets as well as some cash. And here you slide the passport. Easy, easy breezy. But like I said, up here it kind of chipped and down here as well. So here is, this is the delicate part. This is where, you see, this this is where the glazing, it's minimal, but it's normal after 10 years, what do you expect? I think it looks great for something that's 10 years old. Um, you see that little chip here on the glazing? Yeah, that's that's the only issue we got. After 10 years, I wanna say we're fine. I think this is really, and the other side, Yeah, it has a little scratch there, but it didn't chip. That's it. Ten years going. Yeah, I got the PM and the MM. So, Kev, do you like them? Just for reference, Kev is talking about this. This is the small one. Oh, thank you, DMSA. Jacob, you have such nice hands. Thank you. Very kind of you. Look. This is the small packing cube, and then there's a medium one as well. Oh, Debbie, my wallet, yeah. I've had the wallet for, what, 15 years now? Also Louis Vuitton wallet, the Zippy coin, the Zippy coin purse. Fabulous, after 15 years. Kev says, I haven't used them yet. We'll take them on my next trip. But Kev, the beautiful thing about these things is use them at home. Use them everywhere. Mine are all over the place. The other one is on the floor, actually. The medium one. You know, I have a carpet here, but I'm, it's on the floor with the makeup as well. Uh, I love them to bits. They're so, so, and they're light and squishy and practical and they don't occupy the space. They adapt. Love them to bits. So in a way, I want to say Louis has been of the luxury brands out there. The brand I use the most when it comes to these accessories, bags, and travel items. I take my Speedy with me almost every day when I go out. I always, in the Speedy, I always have at least one of my uh, toiletry pouches 15 with me. Look how great the patina has become. And I have uh, the last one that was... real. Uh, manufactured before they discontinued them. Now they brought them back again, but you can see the difference in the patina. This one is new and this one has patina. So yeah, well new, this is like what, uh, almost two years old now, one and a half years old. And this one is like over 10 years old. Um, so I always take one with me. Uh, in my bag, the passport holders in the bag, my zippy coin wallet from Louis always in the in the bag with me as well. 
Uh, Audrey, right? Yes. Uh, I love my Louis Vuitton 15. Jacob made me buy that one. I mean, it's amazing. It's just, how can you not? The Speedy travels so well, I fold it back into a pancake and put her in my carry-on. Me too. Me too. Always. <laughs> Nancy's like, damn, stop. I'm going to buy more stuff. I just bought the Black Murakami uh, Mini Speedy, and I'm surprised how practical it is and so cute. Oh, the vintage one from 2005? Or is the new Murakami collection out already? Cecilia Brown, Jacob, I've just received my new packing cube, and the canvas is very soft, much softer than other Louis Vuitton products I have. Is it supposed to be like that? Yes, it is. Because um, the interior is um, a very, very thin layer of um, lining in woven lining. Not the same as like the Speedy would have. So it is, it's a softer, squishier material. It's supposed to be that way. It's supposed to be that way. So no worries about that, yeah. And yeah, even the medium size is squishy. Yeah. Hey, Andy, Andrew Myers just received my packing cubes but haven't unboxed them. Oh no, you have to unbox them, Andy. Unbox them because you're gonna miss your return date if there's something, heaven forbid, if there's something wrong with them, inspect them. Don't wait too long. Blue Egyptian Lotus says, I regret buying the Pochette Matisse a couple of years ago. I, I, I never worn it, but if I sell it, I don't think I could get much for it. Probably not as much as you spent for it. Probably not. Probably not. Oh, yeah, Joy Love C. Of course, I, I would recommend that as well. If you love the toiletry pouches and you missed out on them before, now the, 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 tree, the trifecta set is definitely something to get. Although, still to this day, I don't use my 19. The 15 is the best one for me. That's why I have two. <laughs> and then the 26, yeah, we love it because of Lady Diana, okay. But uh, it's the 15 for me. This this one. This is the one. 15. The smallest one. Love it. This is the most practical one. It is strangely roomy. Yeah. It fits more than one would think. We'll go, we'll go. I have a ton of stuff in mine. I have my Chanel lippies. Lip gloss. I have the Chanel 31 Rue Cambon. I have another gloss stick. I have my ring pouch. I have painkiller. Let me look how much fits in here. It's a ton. A ton of stuff, you guys. Fabulous. Love it to bits. I have a question. Did they do the Neverfull in the Murakami print? Uh, they did a limited edition with a hand, Murakami friend, uh, hand, years ago. If not, maybe they will make it in the new collection. I never saw one. That's why I'm asking. I think there was like a flower with a hand. What's... In my Louis Vuitton 15, says Audrey. Do we know if they will be selling the 15 as a single item versus... The, no, just the set. Because they want to make more money, I think. But who knows? Maybe they're going to change it. Oh, Debbie says green screen. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's because... It's the MAC... Uh, the green lipstick. Like squirt. So when you put it in... It looks like it looks like it's a hole. <laughs> well, you don't see me in the back though, so obviously it's not a hole. Um, Patricia Casey got the Mac green lippy. Love it. There you go. You see. 
I'm not going to tell you to get something if I don't personally love it myself. So. Or you could get the, tri the trifecta and then make some money back by selling the size you don't use. Like you get all three because they only sell the three. And then you see like, oh, is the 19 something for you or not? If it's not, then you sell the 19, get some money back, and then, you know, you pay off more of the of the set that way. Um, yeah. Oh, really? Brenda Romero says, Deco, but another subject. Chanel sent me a huge paper promo envelope with posters of the new campaign with Brad Pitt and uh, Penelope Cruz. It's all about promoting the classic flap. Came beautifully pack packed and all. Yeah, I just, I wouldn't know what to do. I, I don't like either one of the two, really. So for me, it's like, I love the photos of the bag, but I don't need to see them, too. You know what I mean? It's like, I don't want to, I don't worship them. I don't want to have Brad Pitt or Penelope Cruz hanging on my wall on a poster of, by Chanel. I find it kind of vulgar because I find them vulgar. So, um, yeah. I'd rather just have the photo of the bag. That I would like. But I, I don't want to have them two on, on a... I don't, I don't care for them. I don't want to see them every day. Plus, Brad Pitt now, after his alleged fillers. Oof. No. No. Side guys, I, who would you have chosen to promote the bag? Nobody. The bag speaks for itself. The, the bag doesn't need these Oompa Loompas. Really. I would just have the bag in different scenarios and different settings, out and about and indoors. Like I would photograph the bag like a stolen photography, like I captured a moment of the bag right after somebody put it down on a table or as somebody has it hanging on their chair, on the side of their chair, or as somebody's walking down the street and the bag is hanging off of their shoulder and it's kind of just waving in the back. So the photo is of the back of a person. You don't see the face, but it's just the bag. Or the bag like Romy Schneider uh, did in Boccaccio, uh, the short film. I adore that movie from the 60s by uh, Luchino Visconti. The 255 bag was just on a couch. It was like laying flat on a couch. And the camera pans across the couch with the bag laying on the couch. The bag is open. There's a couple of stuff poking out of the bag, like a lipstick or something, like stuff like that, like everyday life, still life, still life with the 255. That's what I would do. None of these bullshit actors and actresses that really nobody cares about, you know, I, I think they diminish uh, the desirability of the bag because they're just like, who wants, they're not my, you know what I mean? It's like Chanel is like thinking, oh, they need these famous people to create um, like brand ambassadors to create a buzz around these bags. Like, no, you don't. You don't need them. I don't know why they're so insecure, why the brand is so insecure that they think that they need these randos. Uh, you know, Corinna says, they have such beautiful ideas. Yeah, it's so simple, you guys. Really, an iconic, an iconic piece speaks for itself. It doesn't need this these Oompa Loompas. Audrey says, imagine if they used Taylor Swift and Pharrell for their campaign. Well, Audrey, they used Pharrell for their campaign in the past. It was terrible. Taylor Swift? God, no, please, no. <laughs> like, seriously. Yeah, it's more relatable that way, Patricia says, Jacob, to everyone. It's about the relatability. I know these bags are super expensive, but like at least show them in a scenario, in an environment where everybody can envision themselves being the person owning that bag, wearing that bag, putting that bag down at a restaurant, putting that bag on the back of their chair or in their car or on their couch. You know, if you see Penelope wearing the bag, you're like, well, that's not relatable. I'm not a Hollywood actress. I'm not Penelope. Uh, Penelope. It's just, no. No. <laughs> Debbie, I'm so sick of Taylor Swift. 
How do I get the internet to stop showing her to me? Oh boy, you gotta, you gotta block her name. <laughs> butter, heaven, butter. Chris says, except don't they need to advertise um, no to uh, counteract the re uh, reputed decline in quality? Sure, and also to to make it sound like it's great. The bag is worth it even after the price increase, which is, they launched the ad campaign with Penelope right after the price increase. Coincidence? I don't think so, allegedly. Uh, Zeitgeist, yes. Uh, you, uh, do I like the advertisements of Chanel number 22? Uh, you should go and check out my live stream on my perfume channel, Essentially Jacob. That's the name of my perfume channel. I have filmed for the 100th birthday of Chanel number 22, a long format live stream where I analyze the entire history of Chanel number 22. In that video, I also review the ad campaigns of Chanel number 22. So I go in depth on that in that video. So you can go check it out if you want to know more about Chanel number 22. Oshidi says, oh, hi, my name is Lai, and I'm here to Lai. Right, Oshidi Lai? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'd rather have a classic French older lady, says Evan, as in an ad campaign. Deco for Chanel ad campaign. Now that will sell. I don't know if it would sell, but I would be delighted. Audrey says, Carl surrounded and used really random celebrities. Remember Lily Allen? Yes, he explained in an interview that he made them ask Lily Allen to do the ad campaign because she was going nuts in London, buying a ton of Chanel. And the mar marketing team uh, gave word back to him and said, hey, there's this person who is going ballistic, buying everything. He's like, who is it? And they're like, well, it's a singer, Lily Allen. He's like, oh, she loves us so much. Good, let's ask her to do an ad for us because she's cute, she's young. Her music is pop was popular at the moment, and that's why uh, she did the Spring Summer 2010 ad campaign for Chanel in the barnyard. I miss nobody models getting to do these ad campaigns. Not old ass actors. I'm sorry, says Nay. Kev says, call Courtney Debbie. Well, Courtney Love. Uh, did a campaign for Chanel uh, under Carl once. Nancy said, I really Louis Vuitton erased your wish list? Tcha. D, how long did making the Art Lovers Unite film and where did it start? Uh, it started in, well, we, we shot in Berlin. It took between the two shooting days we did and post-production, it took over a year, a year and a half a year and a half with editing and everything. A year and a half. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow, what a job. This is really are the things that make your channel cinnamon roll. Oh, wow, what a job. This, These are really the things that make your channel special. Thank you. What job? Like the idea that I had for the ad campaign? Oh, or you mean the 22? The history of the Chanel number 20? Ah, the history of Chanel number 22. Thank you. Did you see that video? Cinnamon roll? Yeah. It's on my perfume channel in the live stream section of the perfume channel. Good morning, Point Cat. Just got up. So happy you're still live. Can't wait to watch the full stream later today. Thank you, sweetie. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, that's your favorite show, Spring Summer 2010? Sidegeist. Heaven says, I used to love Courtney Love. Then she opened her mouth. I love that she opened her mouth, Heaven. I love that she keeps opening her mouth. <laughs> she can keep it open all she wants. <laughs> you know. Uh, Patricia, how did it start in my mind? Um, I always wanted to film something with Vivian, and since I already worked with her, I knew her kind of indirectly, directly, more or less, as, as directly as you can know Vivian, because, you know, she knows a lot of people, so it's not that easy to know her. So, but um, we, we were going to be in the same place a few times at the same time. And uh, I wanted to first, I thought, I know she's super busy and I can just do maybe a quick video with her about what she, you know, likes art. And I needed help. So I asked Patrick, right, like, hey, could you help out like filming? 
or figuring out how we could produce this thing, like a 20-minute thing just for YouTube. And then Patrick said, why don't you make this bigger? Think bigger. And I thought, well, because Vivian, it's not easy. You can't just tell Vivian, let's film four hours. You know, she, she might say, no, fuck off. You know, she's very much in your face, like, no. So it was really fate and luck because then we started looking for a cinematographer, went through a ton of them. None of them seemed right because we needed somebody who would be invisible to not disturb her while she's talking. We needed a cameraman to be invisible. And then she accepted to shoot, but like, I have no time, I have no time. It's going to be a 20 minute thing. And we set everything up to film whatever time she would give us. Then she had so much fun. We ended up shooting four hours. But we were ready for both instances. We were ready for something short and we were ready for something long, depending on how her mood was. And since she was in a mood, we filmed everything. And luckily, she was in a good mood, so we got uh, a movie out of it and not just the originally planned 20 minutes. There you go. Oh, heaven. Oh, oh no. You're one of those people. You're like, I loved her. But after Kurt passed, I was like, eh, no, 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 no. Don't fall for that narrative. She had nothing to do with it, girl. No, absolutely not. Mm -mm. No, it's a typical thing that the woman is being ostracized because he was a junkie and a total loser. And then like, now it's her fault. You know, she's a woman. But if it, I'm telling you right now, that motherfucker over there is not real. E heaven. I'm not kidding. Imagine if it were the other way around. Just for a second. If it were the other way around. And she kicked the bucket. And he lived on under the same circumstances. You think that one single person would have shat on him for that? No, nobody. He would have been the poor widower. Oh, poor guy, we all feel for him. But because he kicked the bucket and she stayed alive, she stayed alive, a woman survived him. Ah, now, wait, now we're gonna, now we're gonna hang her. It's a it, it, tale as old as time. Tale as old as time. You know. Tale as old as time. Yes, F. Del Mar, Courtney Love was the first to warn us about Harvey Weinstein. Yes, she was. I remember vividly that interview on the red carpet with her where she said it. Yeah. Oh, Brenda, Jacob always sending, uh, uh, standing for us women. Always, baby. Always. You are the mothers. There's... That's it. That's that. That's that. Period. Period. Mother energy, baby. Yeah. So, you know. So she's cool. So Sylvia's like, what is your favorite Courtney Hole song? I don't have a favorite song, but I love the album that came out like shortly after uh, Kurt with the whole, uh, the, what was the first one called? Where she's like with the flowers and the cover and everything is all over the place and she's smeared. Oh my God. The first one. Oh, there's nothing to forgive, Heaven. She did nothing. <laughs> okay, fine. I'm glad you're going to forgive her. <laughs> She's not crazy, y'all. Patricia's like, and everyone said she was crazy. Nah. Um. Oh, Joyful Remorse. Also, that Comedy Central roast where Andy Dick was like groping Pamela Anderson. Courtney Love was the only one who stood up for her. Courtney is a pure soul. She, there is no, she calls it like she sees it, you guys. We have to treasure people like that. Honesty doesn't always feel like flattery. Honesty isn't always smooth as butter, okay? Honesty sometimes cuts like a dagger, but it's important. Courtney is honest. She is to the point. 
She can be obnoxious. So what? Anybody else can be obnoxious. Most people think they can hide their being obnoxious behind closed doors. She's just openly obnoxious. Most of us are obnoxious. Everybody's obnoxious in their own way. So give me a break. But uh, um, she's not afraid to speak the truth. And she's not afraid to, to scream and to warn when there's an alarm. And I very, very, very much respect and appreciate a person who is that unafraid, brave. You know, very brave. And we in our society today, I feel we oftentimes exchange being brave with being stupid or crazy or obnoxious. But that's just the nature of our society. You know, bullies always want to silence you. Our society is a big bully. Society is a big freaking bully. And if somebody's screaming out and warning, sounding the alarm, society is going to try to shut you down and call you crazy and call you names because to discredit you. Because the bully doesn't want you to call out a bully. They want to silence you. Uh, they want to silence you. And you have to have the strength inside of you to scream and shout and not let them silence you. She has that energy, you guys. She has that strength. She has that strength. Um, Coco says, people sometimes hate on honest women because they're afraid of them. Because uh, they're strong and hard to break. Women have it much harder in this society than men, for sure. <laughs> Goes without saying. And uh, sad. You know, that's how society is. A at the moment, can things change? Well, I'm hopeful. I have hope that things can change. I don't think they can change overnight. But I think, you know, baby steps. But keep making them. Keep moving. Keep moving, you know. Deborah says she really loved Kurt and tried tough love on him. It didn't work. Yeah, Deborah. Addicts are very difficult people. She tried her best with him. There you go. Cecilia, oh, in the show business, nobody speaks up. And if you speak up, you are a pariah. You are a persona non grata. They are not going to let you in their circles again. If you speak, oh, yes. They don't, because they're all sold their soul to the devil, you see. So everybody is complacent. Everybody's like, I'll shush about your shit because you're going to shush about my shit. We're going to cover each other's asses. Mm -hmm. I love that too, Deborah C. The broken tiara and the, like, the, uh, the look of the society, the broken down look of the society. Yeah, love it. Love that picture. Um, being neutral means you are sliding with the oppressor as well. For sure. For sure. She got deleted, OCD. Courtney Love is discredited by every major outlet. She got deleted. Somebody else who spoke up and got deleted? Uh, what's her name? Rose McGowan. Everybody calls her crazy. Rose is not crazy. Asia Argento spoke up. And of course, they had to find something worse on her. She spoke up against, uh, you know, men and what they were doing to her and to other women. And then some man, miraculously, loved like, oh, leaked, you know, loved to find something against her. And then they leaked something. Oh, oh, Asia Gentle, look like she's saying something about Harvey Weinstein, but look like she's worse. Please. Coco Chanel, for being a, a woman, that self-made woman, got canceled for something she never did. It's a story all this time, you guys. Shannon Doherty, yeah, Oshidi, there you go, as well. She spoke up now recently about the whole uh, situation with um, Charmed. All the girls came together and they uh, spoke out against that other chick that was uh, attacking them. <laughs> so, uh, Robbie and these ladies were right, exactly. And yet now they're being treated like they're cuckoo. 
Alyssa Milano seems toxic, says Kev. Yeah, I, who knows? Love DIY says, Rose is definitely courageous. Her voice has been speaking out for ages. I admire her. Deborah says, poor Shannon. She has been doing a battle with the big C. Yeah. I posted a picture. They were just at a, uh, like a fair or something a couple of days ago, a reunion for uh, Beverly Hills 90210 and all the actors that were still alive. I mean, Luke Perry is no longer with us, but Shannon was sitting down uh, together with all the other actors that are still with us. And, um, and fans were taking pictures with them. She's, I mean, you see that she's weak and frail. She's been fighting stage four for the longest time. And uh, it's just heartbreaking, you know? And I, just, I don't want her to leave us. I don't want her to leave this planet. I want Shannon to stay with us forever. It made me so sad. It made me so happy to see them all together, but it also made me so sad. Ugh. So allegedly, Alyssa Milano made them fire Shannon Doherty from uh, Charmed. Allegedly, Alyssa Milano said either she goes or I go. And she threatened, this is Alyssa, allegedly, to sue them if she goes. I stopped watching RuPaul's Drag Race OCD. I have no clue what's going on with them anymore. Uh, to sue them for what, asks Pink Ray? I think for like, uh, um, for Shannon making uh, like a, a toxic work environment. She was like, I'm gonna sue you for allowing enabling Shannon Doherty to create a toxic work environment. But now the other chicks from Charmed all sided together with Shannon Doherty and said, enough is enough. And they all spoke out and said, no, Shannon Doherty was never toxic. It was the other chick that was toxic. So it was the other chicks that called Alyssa Milano out for, for being the actual toxic one. Allegedly, allegedly. Cinnamon roll, yes, that is strege. That is strege. But anyway, guys, oh my gosh, we're over four hours again. I want to say thank you to the mods because YouTube does not like when the live streams are too long. Again, the algorithm. Hit it, Bubbles. Thank you, mods, for keeping us safe. A special thanks to the mods in the fashion bunker. Thanks to Debbie, Jesus, Adriation, Nicole, Kevs, and Gloria. Bubbles loves you. We'll go, we'll go, you guys. All our new tier one members. Are you ready for the we'll go, we'll go wisms? Hit it. We'll go, we'll go emoji. Yeah, we will go, we'll go. We'll go, we'll go. Yeah, that's the one. Nobody used the we'll go emoji. Everybody's using the heart emoji. Chayo, such a rowdy bunch. Such a rowdy bunch. Uh, now, <laughs> the Brady bunch. The bunker bunch. That's when they became the bunker bunch. And now, and now, living ferret. I'm living ferret, living ferret. Living ferret, living ferret, living ferret, living ferret. <laughs> living ferret moment, and after the living ferret cometh the dying ferret. Oh, tears of joy, tears of joy, tears of joy. Cha. What? Predator Baby Yoda is back even more invisible than usual? Baby Yoda, you know what? We should maybe color you in a pink color or something so that people can actually start seeing you because you keep hiding and camouflaging yourself. Look at you. Oh, now you disappeared completely. And now your eyeballs are back. And now you're gone. And now you're back. And now you're gone. And now you're back. A cabbage patch attack. And now he's gone. And now he's back. And now he's gone. And now he's back. Oh, oh yeah, he's twerking. 
Oh yeah, girl. Oh yeah, now he back and now he gone and 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 now he back and now he Oh, we gonna go yes, Quinn. Now he back and now he gone and now he back and now he gone and now he back and now he gone and now he back and now he Oh yeah, baby. Now he back and now he gone and now he back. Now he gone and now he back and now he gone and now he back and now he gone. Whoop whoop. Hit it, baby Yoda. Chow 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 chow. Chow 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 chow. Chow 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 chow. And he gone. <laughs> ah, baby Yoda. What a frick. But we love him. We love our baby Yoda. So that was our show. I hope you had fun. Uh, I hope uh, we got to spend some good quality time together. And uh, I hope we managed to, you know, go places. Cathartic moment. Cathartic moment. Uh, heaven is like, that always makes me think of Christmas. It's a vibe. Although I'm not looking forward to Christmas, you know, mm, holiday season. This is one of the reasons why I say oh, Halloween. I love Halloween. But then I, when Halloween approaches, you know, all the shops already start stuffing themselves with like Christmas stuff. And I'm like, wait. <laughs> It's too early. It's only October. Can we like enjoy Halloween to the fullest before you shove Christmas down our throats? Like, please, world. So that's why kind of it spoils Halloween for me a little bit because I get anxiety of, of, of like, oh, my God, it's over. Shops already stuffing stuff with Christmas. I'm like, what about Thanksgiving before that? What, what about Black Friday before? Like, there's a lot of stuff that happens between Halloween and the holiday season. Damn it. <laughs> ah. You know. Love you, people. Late to the game. Bye, guys. Says okay, so good night, everyone. Yes, says thank you. Thank you, too, sweetie. Um, so everyone, Wednesday, have a great weekend and a week. Here. Oh, thank you, Terry. Thank you so much. Uh, you know. Celebrate whatever you want, says Debbie. Yeah. And just like that, another live stream was over. So, to quote those baboons from TikTok that use tiny munchkin microphones and act like they know the ultimate truths about everything, I'm going to tell you the ultimate truth. And they talk like this on TikTok. I don't know why the fuck they do it. And just like that, another moment of truth has happened. We have shared another moment of truth. And boy, weren't we intelligent. Let's toot our own horns. And while we toot our own horns, we're also going to rejoice in the fact that we are here. We are now. We are in the right now. We are here. We are queer. Get used to it. Have a wonderful rest of your weekend. Have a wonderful beginning of the new week. Love your loads. Love your toads, batches. Never give up on love. Bye! Hello. <laughs> Bubbles. <laughs> Hello. Hi, Bubbles. You, you look fabulous. Bubbles mate generated this image, the Triclops Bubbles. It's me with three eyeballs. <laughs> it's Hello. my hair. It's Bubbles. I see what you did there. Bye.